We are in the heart of the San Fernando Valley, Lake Balboa. It's homecoming for El Camino Royale at Rick Prezant Stadium on the campus of Birmingham High School. Hello, everybody. My name is Randy Rosenblum, set to call the play-by-play. This is the West Valley League opener for the Royals of El Camino Royale, and they face a talented Chatsworth Chancellor team. Chatsworth in the non-league, three and two. El Camino, a grueling schedule, one and four, but a nice win, 14-7 at North Hollywood. Once again, we work with Paul Zabalik. Paul, last year, these two teams really went after one another. It was a ground affair. Both teams scored big, and El Camino eked out a victory. What do you see tonight? Well, again, I, I don't see much of a difference. You're going to see a ground and pound out of Chatsworth. You're going to also see an opportunity for El Camino to run the ball, but they're going to try to put the ball up in the air because against Chatsworth and in their previous outings, uh, they've had some issues with the secondary. So I would see El Camino throwing a little more tonight, but certainly Chatsworth is going to run the ball as much as possible. Jesse Leon is uh, an excellent young quarterback. He's very small in stature for the Chancellors, but he's pretty good. Yeah, he's, he's a, I'll tell you, he's an elusive runner. Uh, he, even though he is somewhat smaller in size, he is evasive, he is quick, and he can avoid a lot of tackles. He'll never take a hit straight on. And he's that that dangerous, especially in the open field. For El Camino, the quarterback, a youngster, just a 10th grader, the Hawk, Kevin Hawkins. That's, again, what happened with Hawkins at the beginning of the year was a learning experience. So now five weeks into the season, uh, you're going to see a little more maturity, a little more development. He's had the opportunity now to play against some very difficult opponents. He's had the opportunity to stretch and to see what level he can compete. And I think you're going to see him every week get better and better. And I'm looking forward to him throwing the ball a lot tonight. If you look at this game on paper, it's really picket. Should be very close and down to the wire. The Chancellors and the Royals will be back with the opening kickoff right after this on LA 36. <laughs> Getting set for kickoff here at Rick Prezon Stadium uh, to further Take a microscope on to Kevin Hawkins, that young, talented sophomore quarterback of the men in blue there for El Camino. He's hit 61% of his aerials, five touchdowns and only two picks. He's protected the football early in the season. Again, it's a learning experience for him, and and he's going to mature each week. It's a learning experience, and you're going to see that development, especially over the next probably five games and then certainly into the next season. So the officiating crew, led by Mike Good, one of the veterans in the L.A. City section. He's got some gentlemen working with him. Scott Harold's the umpire. Gilbert Aceto's the head linesman. Brent Wensley is uh, the line judge. And Terrence Hollywood Littlefield will be working, uh, overseeing the defensive backs, making sure they're playing a clean game. This is critical. There's number five, Jake Shirley, who's been a star this season for El Camino Real, tight end, defensive end. Jake Shirley is is the leader of this team. Uh, he is looked upon by the younger players to to give them direction and to to, to develop. Uh, where Shirley goes, certainly the El Camino program goes. Uh, he is the team leader. There's the real team leader, though. Jason Zabak led the team to a city championship just a couple of years ago. He's going to have to defend. Isaiah Ramo, one of the best running backs in the city. And you're saying, why didn't you spotlight him? Well, we didn't know if he was going to play tonight. As a shoulder issue, we were told just moments ago, he suited up. Number 23 in white, who averages 271 yards per outing. He's out there. You probably call the toss because he is one of the captains. And he's a bum shoulder, but he's going to try to go at it tonight. If if he is the athlete that we know he is, uh, he wants to compete. He is not going to sit out. Uh, as long as he is able to, to compete at 110%, uh, you will see the difference in this game. If he can play, Chatsworth will certainly run every down with him. He rushed for better than 200 yards against the Royals a year ago in the second half. And again, El Camino won that football game. Again, it's, it's difficult to try and stop that. But uh, again, if you scheme certain defenses and you look for tendencies, there are ways for El Camino to stop him. Chatsworth has a better non-league record with wins over Monroe, Manual Arts, 
at Reseda. In those games, they scored 48, 55, and 56 points. They averaged 38.4 points per outing. Three and two overall. Their losses to Arlita and last week to Fillmore. You look at the Royals. They're one and four. Tougher schedule. Lost 29 nothing to Pally. Lost 36 19 in the game we had for you on LA 36 at Heritage Christian. They won against a decent North Hollywood team at Husky Stadium on the campus of North Hollywood, 14 7. And the last two games were losses to ranked teams at the time Franklin, 27 7, and Narbonne, 44 0. Narbonne has fallen out of the top 10 in the city poll since then, and they got beat last night by a tremendous Carson team. But the schedule has been grueling for El Camino Real. And, and you've also got to recognize not only are they, it's grueling and the teams they're playing like Palisades and Narbonne and Franklin, uh, clearly playing away and not having a home game affects the players. It has to mentally affect them in, in not a very good way. Mike Good overseeing matters tells us that Chatsworth in white will get the football first. We'll see if Ramo starts. That's a question. If he doesn't, they have a very capable freshman running back on the campus at Chatsworth. Devin Del Toro, number nine. He averages eight yards a carry as the backup to Ramo, but it looks like he may get the start tonight. That's yet to be determined. You know, if one goes down, there's a backup, and the backup sometimes can even be better than the starter. Uh, Del Toro is a freshman, uh, certainly a lot to learn, and getting as much experience as possible. So the Chancellors will get the football first. Frank Ocintra is the kicker, number 22 in blue for El Camino Real. Does all their placement work. 5'8", 150-pound senior, Frank Ocentra. He has it teed up at the 40-yard line. Well, this is going to be an interesting game. Opener in the West Valley League. The projections have Birmingham winning the league again. They're the defending three-time Open Division City champions. And Granada Hills, then Cleveland, then these two teams along with Taft. Tonight there's a feature game. Birmingham's not on their home field, obviously, as they're at Granada Hills, and that should be a beauty. Well, that's a shootout. We're going to be interesting to see how how that game goes tonight and, and how the any kind of an opportunity to upset Birmingham tilts the scale for everybody. Ocentra has it teed up. And again, Chatsworth doesn't throw the, the ball at all. Jesse Lowen has only tried 11 passes this year and completed eight of them. We are underway in the West Valley League. Picked up. Run out across the 15 into the 20-yard line goes Mendoza. Hector Mendoza. A lot better coverage on special teams this time. El Camino has spent time in practice working on special teams. That's a real challenging area for them, and they, they will improve. Here are the key players for the Chancellors, Leon, Del Toro, Alvarez, Gomez, Monroy, and Hernandez. And again, we obviously would have had number 23 in there, Isaiah Ramon, but we didn't know if he was going to play. Number two is Leon, the quarterback. And he can scramble. He can really dance. A rare pass finding Collins, and Collins goes nowhere. 71, Gonzalez on the stop. Uh, well, that was read very well by the corner. They were able to come up real tight and uh, allow zero gain. Beautiful pictures tonight from Lake Balboa. Opener of the West Valley League. 11, Benjamin Gomez Zulo running back, and they can flank him out. And it is Gomez Zulo. Short gain, and it's third and long. This is the test for Chatsworth. Uh, what are they going to do with third and long? They normally don't get into that situation, and uh, they're going to be challenged to throw the ball. Angelo Romo, number 10, checking in for Chatsworth. Also on the flank is Gregory Martinez, a senior wideout. On third down, it is Romo's first carry, and that's a good stop. And it was Gonzalez again. Having a big first series, Gerard Gonzalez, 6'3", 285-pound senior. 
That is a terrific start for EZR. Interesting formations that Chatsworth came out. They didn't come out in running formations. They came out throwing the ball, which is unusual for this team. Didn't take long to get Ramon in the ball game with the bad shoulder, did it? Let's see if it continues. Putting situation for Chatsworth. Sanders with the fair catch. Jalen Sanders. We saw him against Heritage Christian make a nice catch for a touchdown, number one, for ECR. Well, one of the things we have to see tonight is Sanders stepping up and catching the ball. We've had some opportunities for him, and uh, he's got to take advantage of catching that ball and moving. Here are the key players for the Royals. We've already seen 71 make his presence felt. He is, uh, he is definitely a force once he starts to play. Uh, he can break up as many different kinds of runs as, as Chatsworth can have. Excellent starting field position for El Camino Real. They begin from their 48-yard line with Kevin Hawkins running the show. Number five, Shirley, is his main target. He's got 33 passes this year. And off, and they run into one another, and it's Walker, and he's going to get thrown for a loss. Miscommunications on that. They've got to be able to to, to execute. Uh, 26 didn't know what side to go on, and Hawkins uh, almost fumbled the ball on the exchange. Loss of two. It'll be second down in a dozen. Just not a clean play. Again, a mix-up in communication. They've got to be able to talk to each other. Edwin Torres, linebacker and fullback, read that play beautifully on defense for the Chancellor. Second down and 12, just the beginning of the ball game. Three minutes in. Fly sweep with Sanders. Out to the 50-yard line. Well short of the first down. Following the block of the center, Ben Chauvel. Sanders can be the difference in this game because they're keying on, on Shirley. Uh, Sanders can move with, uh, whenever he gets a handoff, and clearly in the open field, he is a force. At midfield, they need to reach the 42 of Chatsworth for a first down. There's Kevin Hawkins. He's come a long way in just a few weeks. He has been uh, trial by fire. He's, again, had a lot of different challenges with the, the strength of schedule, and Every day, every play is a learning experience. And he had a concussion. He was in concussion protocol, and he's been cleared. And that's a good thing. So he got the nod tonight. Watch Shirley underneath. Third and eight. Excellent protection. Open target. Then the fumble. Would have been good enough for the first down to Kalani. Then he lost the ball. First down, Chatsworth. You can see everybody covering Jake Shirley, number five, and number 14 was wide open. Yeah, Kalani found a hole in that zone. It was wide open, and he was stripped by Gomez Zulo again, the two-way player. I like the team there going over there and consoling that young man after making the mistake. First down at the 31 for Chatsworth. 8.15 left, opening quarter, we're scoreless. Randy Rosenbaum with Paul Zabak. This is El Camino football on LA 36. Watch number 57. He's going to tell you where the ball's going. And they just keyed on him. If you watch 67 lead the play, he'll tell you where the ball's going. Noma Zulo had no chance. Thrown for a three-yard loss. El Camino getting off the ball in a hurry on defense. This is what we were talking about earlier on that run protocol. Uh, the lead fullback, the, the number 67 in this offense, he will tell you where the play's going. Time out on the field. Early on, ECR getting the better of the line play. Yeah, they again, dominating the line is key to any football game. Whichever line dominates and takes charge of the line of scrimmage will usually win a football game. That's where the difference is. Well, El Camino, when you talk to Jason Zabong, I said, what do you need to do a little bit better this week to improve? He goes, we need to get better in all three phases. Football is three parts. It's not just offense and defense. 
The special teams are a big part of it. One third of the game, as my old friend Don James used to tell me. Of course, Don James, many, many years ago, great coach at the University of Washington, where balls a ball play. Again, look at your fullback, key 67 in the white helmet. He'll tell you where the play's going. 67 is John Monroy, and again, Gonzalez right in the middle of it all. 71, playing splendid football early for El Camino Real. No chance for Ramon. He's a motivated young man. Yes, he is, and again, he sees the key. He's getting that, that edge and that jump with looking where that fullback's going. He, there's just no way you're going to block that force once he gets his steam moving. Shane Bogaz was also there, number 21 in blue. Leads the team with four picks. Leon to the air. It's caught. Gomez Zulo into El Camino territory. First down, Chatsworth. Who says the Chancellors can't throw the ball? Well, again, that's the difference. That If they're going to open it up, they're going to be a force because you start keying on an offensive uh, run play, that leaves the secondary wide open. And this play should have been made, but uh, it unfortunately uh, for El Camino uh, didn't happen. Yeah, and Jesse Leone has been accurate, unlike that snap. And he just falls on it. It's going to be a big loss. He had to fall on it because Shane Bogaz was right there for ECR. Clock that, running that with 6.40 left in the quarter. That nullifies that big gain. The opener in the West Valley. El Camino Real in Chatsworth. See what they have for second and very long. Rameau in the middle. This is his first opening. He takes it out across the 40 to the 43-yard line. At that point, he was dropped by Javon Cagua, and Cagua is one of those transfers from North Valley Military. Those are the difference makers that Coach is talking about, and uh, they should be able to play and make a difference. Just a little counter play, and uh, he, he was able to read it and cut back. Leon has no chance. Sam Sachs throws him hard to the ground. Fourth and very long, and again, Chatsworth is denied. Sam Sachs is a, a junior with a lot of playing experience. He's uh, one of those uh, that they're looking to, to to make a big impact on defense, the junior. Sanders drifting back to return the punt. El Camino get drove right down the field, and the turnover cost them. That might have been partially blocked. El Camino will get great field position. I think it just uh, was a bad kick. Here comes the offense of ECR. This is what ECR has to do is get good field position every time they get the ball. That's what the defense is able to do is to give them field position in the middle of the field rather than on their five-yard line. Well, we'll begin this drive from their 46. Walker will be the running back, number 26. 5'6", 150-pound sophomore who sees the hole really well. Adrian Walker. Like the way... Kevin Hawkins threw it the first time, completing it. Unfortunately for him, Kalani made the catch, then fumbled. Looking for Shirley. This time he's not protected, and down he goes. A furious pass rush for Chatsworth. Controlling the line of scrimmage. The defensive line certainly made their point. They weren't going to be denied. Boy, they broke through there, and no chance for the Hawk. <laughs> 6'6", 
second and very long. Close to 25 needed. Hawkins again retreating. Just checks down. He gets some of it back on that short pass to Adrian Walker. That was almost a delayed screen. They just let the defensive alignment penetrate, and uh, Hawkins dropped back and was able to find that, that release receiver. Makes it a little bit more manageable. Go a long way to overcome the down and distance. It's third and 15. We're down to three and a half minutes left in the opening quarter. Elko and Chatsworth are scoreless. We expected points in this one, Paul. So far, the defenses are playing well. Well, Chatsworth is uh, surprisingly throwing the football, which uh, uh, is away from their normal game plan, and Elko is throwing the ball and getting sacked. And uh, They're sticking to their game plan, and it's not working out, at least this early. Jalen Carrillo has checked in number six on the flanks for ECR. That's Carrillo in motion. Hawkins rolling, and he'll run. He needs 15. That's a great job. He got it. Pushed out of bounds. What a job by Kevin Hawkins there to move the sticks. That's the 12th man is able to get the quarterback moving out of the pocket and running. Uh, You can't key that. That's one thing that you have to prepare for, but then know that it's going to happen. First down to the 41-yard line. Did you tell her thank you? What, do you get refreshments in here? You're thanking everybody. They just came here and gave us water and food. Love it. First down. Into the flat. Shirley's first catch of the night. And he's still going. There goes Jake Shirley. They can't bring him down. What a play by Jake Shirley. Touchdown, El Camino Real. Number five has his fifth touchdown of the season. The difference maker for El Camino. He is the team leader. They look to him to make these plays, and he doesn't disappoint. You give him an inch, he'll get a mile. The sixth touchdown pass of the year for Kevin Hawkins. What a play by Jake Shirley. It looked very innocent. But yet he broke so many tackles. Well, they, they weren't able to wrap him up. He, he is a, 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 a tough runner. He'll run through arm tackles, and you've got to hit him the whole body. Oh, Sintra for the point after. Lines come together, and the flag comes out. Part of the snap, encroachment, defense. Half the distance to the goal, replay the try. Do you think about going for two? So far, they're going to go the conventional way and That's say, now we're going to take the one. That's what you do. You kick it? Kick it. I don't know. I'd be tempted to go for the two. Osintra is a very good kicker, however, and he makes it 7 0 ECR. The ball look at his staff have confidence in that kicker. Well, what a play by Jake Shirley. That's the play of the night so far. Let's take a look at it. Again, he's wide open in the flat, and he just breaks tackles. He just runs through arms uh, and hands. You, you, you've got to put a body on him to get him down. He will not go down with arm tackles. Just look, look how many miss. They just got to stop him one-on-one. I don't know if you can stop Jake Shirley one-on-one. 34 catches, six touchdowns, and he's elated after that latest TD. Good start for El Camino. They had the fumble, but other than that, they've been a very impressive team in the opening quarter. But for the the sacks on on Hawkins, uh, they're dominating the the first quarter, certainly. But it's got to be sustained. I think the key, too, is... Ramon had one positive run out of four carries so far. They've done a good job on Isaiah. Well, again, you're key. You key on that fullback, you'll stop that offense. Oh, Sintra kicking off. The 
with a 7-0 lead. Two and a half minutes remains in the opening quarter. This one is returnable. Out across the 35-yard line. It's a nice return by Romo. Angelo Romo. Well, let's see what the chats with offense can muster up here. They've been bottled up in the opening frame. Both teams are using young players. They're using these sophomore and juniors and giving them a lot of experience. Marvin Street, the head coach, does a really nice job with these young men at Chatsworth. Had him on our SoCal Prep Report show and was proud of his team's effort so far in the year as Leon just takes it forward. In their scouting report, if you look at the way they lined up, the quarterback was under center, and usually they'll run pitch power out of that scheme, but this time the quarterback just kept it. Good game, though. Picked up close to five yards. We'll call it second down at six. <clears throat> but a positive play. Should be pitch power here. There it is. Rameau is on his way. Isaiah Rameau. Shades of Jake Shirley. Touchdown, Chatsworth. Well, they had bottled him up until right there. What a run by Rameau. You're not going to keep an athlete down. He's not going to be settling just to occasionally play. He wants to win, and he's going to demonstrate that. He is an athlete. We've seen two all-star plays by two all-stars. These are your all-valley players. That's a big answer for Chatsworth, who had been controlled in the first quarter in one big play, turns it right around. And we all know how effective the pitch is if it's run correctly. They're going for two. And they rush it. It's close. They're right near the goal line. I don't think he got there. Leon on the sneak. And El Camino held. And it's a one-point lead. ACR got the stop. It's different running a quarterback sneak in the red zone than it is in the middle of the field. They all came in and pinched the center, and that's why uh, Leon didn't make the uh, two-point conversion. What a run by Rameau, though. That he was again, splendid. He, he just follows his blocks and breaks three tackles. Again, you're not going to tackle him with hands and arms either. you got to get a body on him. And he's had a couple 300-yard games this year. He has well over 1,100 yards and averages about 15 yards a carry. He's just been sensational for Chatsworth. He's, he's playing with a bad shoulder. He's a competitor. Again, his coaching staff didn't want him to play. They did not want him to play, but he said, you know, I'm going. You bet. You don't keep a great athlete on the bench. Ramirez to kick off. This one, too, is returnable. Walker. In fact, that's Sanders returning it. I'm sorry, Jaden Williams was the man that brought it back. Jaden Williams, 16. Good look at our lead official, Mike Good. First down, ECR stung now after that long touchdown by Isaiah Ramo. Beautiful pictures. Uh, what a night in, in the heart of the valley. Lake Balboa, the winds died down, no breeze at all. It was an earlier threat of potential rain, but that's gone by the board. It's going to be a, a gorgeous night. 7 6 El Camino Real lead. El Camino should answer now and just come right back and take more points. Four on the flanks for ECR. Excellent protection for Hawkins. Intended for Shirley, knocked away. He was double covered. There is a flag down, and it could be interference. Mendoza defending. You'll notice how the interference defense number 11, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. Good 
You'll notice him converge on Shirley here and not give him a chance to catch it. Gomez Zulo with the foul. Final 90 seconds of the quarter. They'll move the sticks up to the 40-yard line. First down, ECR. They're going to double cover Shirley. That's going to leave Sanders wide open. And, again, he's got to make the difference. When he gets the ball, he's got to keep it and get, get in the open field. Another pass. Same target, Kalani. And Kalani is doing damage after the catch. He'll hold on to the ball this time. <laughs> Allegria made the stop. Number 30, Nathan Allegria. You'll notice how he protected the ball as he was going down. He didn't want to fumble again. Boy, those uniforms of Chatsworth look just like the Loyola Cubs from the southern section. Very prominent program over the year, the Cubs. And over the years, they've been so good. Another first down. El Camino into Chatsworth territory in the final minute of the quarter. Surely underneath. He's got the ball. They still can't bring him down. Spinning as he goes. You got to love it. The determination of Jake Shirley. And Alvarez had to put a body on him. If you see it here, but he came in full speed and, and was able to stop Shirley body to body. No arm tackle there. But Shirley was wide open underneath. Short gain of about four and a half. See the clock winding down in the opening quarter. Homecoming for El Camino Real. About 1,500 on hand supporting these Royals who have not had a home game in a couple of years, even though this is their home coming. And that will uh, conclude the opening quarter. They don't want to take another snap. So they'll come to the sideline with a one-point lead. And we said at the top of the show, on paper, this one is even. And the first quarter is basically even. The only difference is... El Camino kicked a PAT, and Chatsworth went for two and failed. But you have the big playmakers. Again, you, you can't deny uh, when you have a Jake Shirley and, and you have a, a, a Ramon, you, you just got to put bodies on those people to stop them. And we haven't done that on either team this, tonight. Chatsworth hasn't done it, and neither has uh, El Camino. Well, again, Chatsworth will feature Isaiah Ramo when healthy. And... and He's a guy that's twice this year gone up and gotten 300 yards in a game. So he torched Monroe early in the season, and he's just a terrific running back, and that's going to be an issue for Noe Duran's defense at ECR. They've got a key on those certain certain players that will tell you where the ball's going, and, and if they can overload that, those areas, they'll stop Ramon. But, again, they got to tackle him. Body to body. They can't just tackle him with an arm or a hand. He won't go down. What a start for number 71 going both ways for El Camino. In that offensive front, he had a couple terrific tackles in that first series of downs. Second down and six. 6'3", 292 pounds, Jared Gonzalez. Yeah, he's a leader. In fact, when they had media day at Birmingham earlier in the year for the West Valley League meetings, Jason Zabot brought number 71 as his guest. Hawkins electing to throw it late, and he has John with a catch, but he's out of bounds. Never had full control and incomplete. Hawkins had room to run there. He did, and he also had Shirley open underneath as well. I mean, he had two receivers, and he went for the deep receiver. Uh, he could have run it and uh, thrown it to Shirley as well. In a case like that, you don't really want your quarterback to take hits. Are you happy he throws the ball? Obviously, you wanted it to be caught. Or would you like to say, hey, take off and get the first down? That's going to come with maturity. That decision. But you maybe, want him to run. Well, you want him to do what is right in that situation. And clearly, he might have had an opportunity to throw it to Shirley rather than run. But he, he made the decision to go to the deep receiver. Third and six. Deep ball over the middle. Wide open is Sanders, and he's overthrown on that post pattern. 
Was Should have been open. a touchdown. He was wide open, and, and Hawkins stepped right up into the pocket and had time to throw the ball. And uh, uh, Young freshmen, sophomores make those mistakes, and, and it will come with time. The timing is the key. And not only does it take experience, but it will take some more playing to get that down. And do it Fourth right. down at six. Offense stays out there. They're at the 38 of Chatsworth going for it. Leading by one are the Royals. Chatsworth is vulnerable underneath the first seven or eight yards. There's the pass to Sanders. He has first down yardage. So they convert on fourth down to the 22-yard line. The great work of Jalen Sanders bringing that one in. It's yardage after catch makes the difference. And he caught it within eight yards and got another eight yards. Ball between the 21 and 22-yard line. We'll call it the 21. It's a good throw on fourth down. And again, he was able to get another eight yards, seven yards after catch. Well, that'll be a confidence builder for this 10th grade quarterback, Kevin Hawkins. Four games of JV ball last year. That's it. That was his background coming into this season. But he has a very high ceiling, as you can see. Trips to the left of the Hawkins. We call him the Hawk. Under duress, he throws it wide of Jong. He didn't have a chance there. Pressure coming in on Hawkins. Well, again, you had uh, nobody blocking him. He came in untouched, and, and that'll rattle any quarterback. You just got to be able to get rid of it quick, and Hawkins did. And unfortunately, he wasn't caught. Second down and 10. Randy Rosenblum, Paul Zabalik with you. This is El Camino Royale Royals football on LA 36. Homecoming at Birmingham High School. It's tough to say homecoming at someone else's field. Well, they played here before. They play what, Narbonne here and lost. And they have Birmingham here on the 13th. So in a sense, it's becoming their home field. Although they'll be the true visitor against the Patriots when they play them here on the 13th. Hawkins rolling to his left for Shirley. Great catch. First down to the 10-yard line. A rolling, sprawling, diving catch by Jake Shirley. And he saw him wide open, and, and he was able to get out of the pocket and, and still make the completion. Shirley's been open all night long. Shirley he has. Three catches already for Jake Shirley, the all-star. And a guy that just competes. You can see him break open here, and there's nobody around him. Chatsworth's defense is vulnerable within the first seven to eight yards from the line of scrimmage. They have not been able to get their linebackers in position. With the ball tickling the ten, it is first and goal. Ten minutes to play on the half. Royals threatening. Walker, inside counter, running hard to the goal line. Touchdown, ECR. What a run by Adrian Walker. Broke tackles. Was able to evade a couple of right line, uh, linemen right at the line of scrimmage and was able to get there, not to be denied. Adrian Walker. Not a whole lot of bulk on Adrian. But number 26 at 150 pounds. Again, we talked about his ability to hit the hole. He hit the hole and he showed some strength. He, he wasn't going to be denied. Oh, Sintra for the point after. Looking to build the lead to eight. Perfect. 14-6, El Camino Royale. You'll notice how those players came down the field and not to be denied after uh, what we saw from Ramon. They just answered and came back down and said, our turn. Nice drive there by ECR. They overcame a fourth down that big pitch and catch. Some, uh, excellent marksmanship from the quarterback. Big plays on the outside. And ECR was able to sustain the drive and get the TD. Can we say Jake Shirley? 
Shirley, Shirley? Yeah, we did. So far, a festive homecoming for the Royals. I like the way El Camino's playing. They're playing with force. They're playing with confidence. They're, they're playing at their level now. They're playing teams at their level. Anxious to see Ramo again after his long touchdown run. You're going to believe he wants more. Oh, Sintra kicking off. Short pooch kick. That's fumbled. That's a loose football. Looks like El Camino jumped on it. Royals football. A huge break for El Camino Royal. That's a practice special team play. They pooch it and hope that the other team fumbles it and touches it to make it a live ball. And that's exactly what happened. He touched it, didn't have control, and it's a wide open field at that point. Unfortunately for the Chancellors, Luke Lawrence muffed it at ECR. Was there a flag? And apparently there was because they're making El Camino kick it again. So oh, El Camino really must have hurt themselves with a marker. I did not see it come down. Nor did I. Unfortunately, those are the mistakes and those are drive killers when you when you have the momentum and you just give it up because one player made a mistake. El Camino was offside. The guy who feels good about that is Luke Lawrence. As he dropped it, and now it doesn't matter. And you gotta Nullified. believe they're gonna kick it in the end zone this time, is my guess. Or as far to the end zone as they could. Boy, you just Got to shake your head if you're Jason Zabalik. You think he got a huge break, and one of you guys ran offside. And that should never happen. They watch the ball. They don't move until the ball's kicked. 14-6 Royals, but a second chance for the Chancellors on this kickoff. Oh, they pitched it again. Yep. This time it's picked up by Devin Del Toro. Helmets are flying. Devin Del Toro is that freshman running back. They absolutely adore at Chatsworth. Bogaz with the stop. Another marker down. Ball spotted at the 41, but let's check out the infraction. Mike Good will give us the details. Dead ball. Personal foul. Defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. We'll tack that on. It will be an excellent field position for the Chancellors. Into El Camino Real territory. You have seen a 45-yard reversal of field with that one mistake by El Camino's kick team. And now they've got great field position for Chatsworth. And again, the fullback will lead it. Timeout, Royals. Want to settle your team down here with the timeout. Well, let's hope that that's exactly what they're going to do. I mean, you give up that momentum, and it, it'll take an effect. Mentally, it has an effect. When you do things that are mistakes, it just perpetuates the drive. Okay, on Wednesday nights, Prep Sports Night Live, Rich and Bob do the honors. Rich and Stray and Bob Gibson, terrific show. It lasts an hour from 7 to 8. They bring schools in to have some fun, and rock and bruise, and it's a, it's a wild hour. 
And, uh, Rich and Bob know their prep sports. Great show every Wednesday night here on LA 36. And on Thursday, I'm joined by Tark Fatal of SB Live for SoCal Prep Report, 9 to 9.30. Got Marvin Street on this past week as you see Ramo back on for Chatsworth. Quarterbacks under center. It looks like pitch. Well, they're lined up like you might toss it back to number 23. That's always a good idea. And they do. He's bottled up. That was terrific defense. Caden McCoy, number four, jumped the play. But they also read the key. Also there was Kona Malik. In a pitch offense, your key is the guards and tackles. They're going to pull. I think we have an injured player. Hey, you guys watch. Chatsworth player down one of the interior linemen. So we have a timeout. 14-6 Royals. Hard fought first half. We came in thinking there'd be points. First couple series, the defenses control things. Then the big plays started to happen from the stars. It's It's been a fun first half and a well-played first half. Not a whole lot of flags, although a couple of them in recent moments hurting ECR. Well, you saw the start of the, of, of the game, Chatsworth was throwing the football. They didn't do, make any progress, so they went right back to what they know, and that's running the ball, and El Camino has been throwing the ball. Those are the projections, and El Camino has stuck to theirs, their game plan to throw the football. Nice crowd on hand. El Camino sold well over 1,000 tickets to this game for homecoming. And you can see uh, they're here in mass. Hard to see the moon tonight with all the clouds. It looks like you could have a werewolf out tonight, doesn't it? It's coming down to Halloween time. Yep, it's uh, warming up. You got your costume yet? Right? All I do is walk naturally, and I have my costume on. <laughs> Unfortunately, the young man is still down. We can't catch the number. They've got a training staff around him, and uh, players have been moved to the sidelines as they attend to the fallen offensive lineman of Chatsworth. And again, in this situation, they will take all the time necessary. Can tell you the player is sitting up, which is a great sign. Well, now they told him to just sit back down, but there are some indications that he's going to come to his feet and does. We're going to help him off. Looks like it's Edward Ayala, defensive end, tight end, a 205 pound junior. And I like this too because El Camino's guys. Led by Jared Gonzalez, helping him to the sideline. That, that's just great sportsmanship. It's it's what it's all about for the players. They they learn. They all know each other. They've gone to high school together. They've gone to junior high together, and they've played in youth leagues together. So they know each other. Apparent leg injury for 84. I I believe it's him, and I, even that was hard to tell. That number was. Somewhat obscured. Here comes Chatsworth again. They'll start from the 45 of El Camino Real. Second down. Ball's on the ground. Chatsworth a little more loose with the football here. And Ramal pounced on it. It was a bad exchange pitch. Again, coming into the game, Isaiah Ramo had 16 touchdowns. He picked up his 17th one tonight with that long run. And 271 yards per game. That's astounding. Plays blown dead. Prior to the snap. 
encroachment defense. Five yard penalty, still third down. And you don't want to give Chatsworth, who runs the ball effectively. These are the mistakes. Additional yardage. Make your coach pull his hair out. Third down and about five and a half, and it's Rameau running and running hard, diving forward. Don't know that he got to the first down sticks, but it's going to be close. And you would think they'll go for it on fourth down. And Romo is shaking up. Number 10, Angelo Romo. Slow to get up. He hurt his leg. Got it twisted there. You know they're going to run Romo again. He's going to just get the pitch. He needs the two yards. Chasworth is starting to lose some players here. Romo is helped off. And they only have about 27 guys on the roster. They don't have a lot of players. So they can ill afford to lose bodies. It is fourth down at a short two. Also an option we talk about Rameau is Jesse Leone calling his own number. That's what it looks like they may do. Oh, pitch. The pitch to Rome. Yeah, he didn't get it. Nope, they, they went to number 23, maybe once too often, and Rameau... Looks to be denied. The ball's going to go over on downs, and ECR is held. In in those situations, you give the ball to your best back over the best lineman, and you let him work. That time, El Camino spotted it and stopped it. Really, they've done a nice job against Ramon, minus the one play, and that's a big, big play. Yeah, they put, they put seven guys in the box, and... Uh, took their linebackers and put them up on the line of scrimmage and, and hoped that they were able to make the play. 14-6, to six, El Camino Royale. Still eight minutes to play in the half. Now this is a momentum drive. They've got to take it down and put it in. Surely. Eludes one and goes down the sideline. Jake Shirley has been unbelievable in this first half. Yeah, it is a first down, Jake. This is the not denied drive. This is what you have to be able to do. Good teams will then take advantage of that opportunity where they got a big momentum stop, and now they're going to drive down the field. Let's see if Elko can do it. To the 35-yard line of Chatsworth. Shirley was wide open in the flat. There was nobody there, and he broke tackles again, arm tackles. One. Two, three. First down, Royals. They fake to Jong and give it to Walker, and that play was eaten alive. 21 came in unblocked again. It's they, they, That's twice the, that, that he was able to do that and break up the play. He's coming in off the edge. See Hawkins throw the ball here a little bit. He's had success tossing it down the field. Shirley's had a very productive opening half. Boy, they're giving him a big cushion on the left side. That one was not a good throw. Underthrown and said not well directed. Chatsworth running a zone defense in the coverage in the secondary, and they're just not doing what they need to do. El Camino Real trying to build on their advantage. Boy, Ahmad Odom has been very good so far in this one. Number 21 in white. One of the new additions. Deep throw. Jong is out there. Touchdown, ECR. 
What a pitch and catch. And Caden John brought it in. We talked about that earlier. Chatsworth is vulnerable in the secondary, and they've been showing that in, in, in uh, previous games. And Hawkins was able to get the ball to him, and he was wide open. What a throw by the Hawk. Went after for Ocentra. He's three for three. Two touchdown passes in the opening half for Kevin Hawkins. You're impressed with Ahmad Odom, number 21 in white, but even he couldn't stop this pitch and catch. Nope. He wasn't even involved in it, but the thing is he almost blocked the extra point here. He was unblocked again, and he could have been the difference maker had he just nipped that, uh, the kick, but uh, they got it through. And this is the difference maker. This is what momentum is all about in football. You just saw it demonstrated. El Camino had a big stop down here on Chatsworth on fourth down. They took the ball, moved it right down the field. That's demoralizing to a defense. This is something that you see in, in college sports. When that momentum shifts, you can almost feel it. It's a sensing. And this is exactly what we saw here. So far, other than that one early fumble, El Camino Royale has flexed its muscles. They look like they might be a D1 team the way they're playing tonight. Again, they're one and four against a terrific schedule. Their losses to Palisades, Heritage Christian, Franklin, and Narbonne. Those are really good schools. Their win over North Hollywood. That's a flag. I'm not exactly sure what they were trying to accomplish. That might have been the most obvious offside I've seen this year. And, and they they practice that every day. And, you, I mean, it's shocking to see these kind of mistakes. It's just unbelievable. That was as obvious as it gets, though. Again, you should not cross that line of scrimmage until the ball is kicked. That's, that's rule number one. You watch the ball. When the ball's kicked, you go. By the way, that was Caden Jong's first touchdown reception for the Royals this year. And it was gorgeous. And El Camino's not surprising. They've been throwing the football. That's exactly what we predicted. Ocentra oh, kicking off. Another short one. Straight out of bounds. This time, Luke Lawrence didn't field it. And it's going to be a solid starting spot for the Chancellor. That's the risk. When you don't kick it where you need to kick it, and it just goes out of bounds, you give up field position right there. And uh, it's a great starting place for Chatsworth. And again, you're going to see Ramon. He's going to get the ball, and they're going to keep giving it to him until he's breaking it. You pound it and pound it and pound it, and eventually the cracks happen, and he'll break loose. He'll scrimmage from the 40-yard line. Here's pitch. Quarterback sneak. Leon. Oh. Sacks with the stop. I don't know that Chatsworth got the man off the field. It looked like 12 on the field. We'll sort it out. What an illegal substitution. Offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Yeah, they had players running off the field. Didn't get to the sideline at time. In our day, they used to call that illegal procedure. Your day's right now, isn't it? <laughs> it's illegal participation. Yeah. But that wiped out a nice five-yard run. And now it brings up second down and long. Guys like Jake Shirley could be teeing off and coming after the quarterback. Pitch out. Moreau breaking tackles. 
Didn't look like there was a whole lot there, did it? But he got seven yards. Boy, Isaiah's a good one. He makes stuff happen. That's an absolute fact. They've gone to the I formation, and, and that's pitch power. And they've gone away from the, the fullback lead. He got the seven there, but he went to the outside, Paul. He didn't play between the tackles there. He went to the perimeter. So they wanted to bounce him outside instead of have him come inside where he's done most of his damage throughout the season. Third down and close to eight. Only a couple there for number 23, Ramo. They went back to the offset fullback look, and uh, Ramo, will, that'll key where Ramo's going to run the ball. On fourth down, it's fourth and six. Now, normally this is a punting situation. We'll see what the Chancellors do. They're finally going to send the punting unit in. Marvin Street not going to gamble. Jalen Sanders will drift back and return the punt. Four and a half minutes left in an opening half that has been dominated by ECR. Sanders. I don't know if he if he touched it, it's Chatsworth ball. I don't think he did. He did cover it anyway. Boy, that was risky. He didn't seem to be very aggressive on that, did he? No, I didn't know what he was doing. I don't know what his intention was. Did he touch it? I couldn't tell. I thought he did. It looked like he did. Yeah, let's take another look at that. This is interesting. I don't know. It's hard to tell if he did touch it, but he bounces on it anyway. He's very fortunate it wasn't recovered by Chatsworth. Yep. Really difficult to tell if it got any of his hands. It either went right through him or it just scraped it. But, again, the ref was right on the scene. So, And it backs up El Camino Real. And this is not where you want to start with offense. That's why your defensive sets are so important to make those stops and give your offense better field position. Start beyond the 30 rather than inside the 30. Well, they're inside the 20 here. They have better than four minutes to move down the field. El Camino leading by 15. To the air. Wide open again is Kalani. He seems ha- to have that knack ball to, to get open in the secondary, Kalani. Well, they're playing them real soft. The secondary is not coming up and pressing. They're giving him enough up front that, that he can make that play and catch and run, uh, which is very dangerous with these receivers. El Camino has some speed on the outside, and if you let them catch the ball, there's a chance they can break it. Eight of seven. It'll be second down and three. As you can see, the clock is running. Under four minutes to play in the half. Two touchdown passes for quarterback Kevin Hawkins. One to Shirley and a dart to John. Walker has a hole. Walker has a first down to the 34-yard line. Hard running from Adrian Walker. He just followed Jared Gonzalez, and the hole just busted open. Elko playing some solid football tonight. Looking to improve to 2-4 and four overall, but more importantly, 1-0 and oh in the league. They'll be at Taft next week, and the game we'll have on LA 36. You always call that the championship of Woodland Hills. The game of pride. Chatsworth will be look, back. Look how deep Birmingham. the secondary is covering these receivers. They're giving them that, that real big cushion. And Hawkins is seeing that. Handoff, simple handoff. Walker, not a whole lot there as he's thrown down by Monroy. El Camino certainly has some size on the offensive line, and they've got to take advantage of that. And those blockers have to make those deep blocks into the second, second level. Mentioning that Chatsworth will play Birmingham next week. It won't be here. It'll be at home. So Chatsworth will get the champion Patriots next week. Shirley's wide open in the slot here. And you didn't even see him. Walker. Short game. 
again Odom with the stop. If you look at that set, look at that play again, you'll see Jake Shirley is wide open and, they, and Hawkins didn't see him, which they should go back to the huddle and just tell him that. Was good enough for the first down. They didn't need a whole lot there and got the first down. Clock running though, a minute 35 left. Hawkins under duress. Smartly runs to the sideline to kill the clock. It's an alert play by quarterback Kevin Hawkins. Getting more mature each down, each play, each game. He's getting more and more mature. Making good decisions. Jong, too. Yeah. There's some packages for Jong to play quarterback tonight, number two. He's had a couple of plays from scrimmage as the signal caller. If you ask him, though, he'll tell you, I'd rather play wide receiver than be quarterback. He loves the wideout position rather than the quarterback spot, although he can be utilized in that regard. The cushion for these wide receivers is amazing that, that they're giving them that. Play fake by the Hawk. Low to the ground and incomplete for Shirley. Beautiful secondary coverage from Naim. Shawnee Naim. He reversed, uh, pivoted on, on that. And hit, if he had seen Shirley earlier, he was wide open. And once he did see him, the coverage already converged on him. Third down and six. Buck 18 to play in the half. When El Camino dials up here. This wide wide receiver screen is wide open here. Look at this coverage here. You see there's nothing there. Might want to target number five, though. Although he is going to that open area, and it should have been picked. Into and out of the hands of Quentin Collins, number eight. It's fourth down and six, and you'll send the punting unit here. You don't want to give away that field position with more than a minute to play. Absolutely not. Again, Hawkins, uh, he waited too long to throw that ball. He's got to do, do it quicker, release it quicker. That might have been the break that Chatsworth needed. That can be. Again, the momentum changes, and you can see it and feel it. Oh, Sintra on to punt. That's a beautiful punt, and no chance for Romo. Great good coverage. See, good to see that number 10's back out there. He got injured earlier, and he's healthy. And he took some punishment there, and it was excellent coverage. Well, here's the case. If you're Chanceworth, you want to try to get something before the gun sounds. You got 63 seconds. You're down 15. It would help them mightily to score before intermission. My guess they're just going to keep their game plan the way it is, and they're going to run the pitch out of the eye, or they're going to go to the fullback lead. I don't suspect they're going to try to throw it up. Uh, there's the fullback lead. Ramo. Yep. He's a human battering ram. Good game, but that's not going to get it done for Chatsworth. They're going to keep pounding it, hoping that Rameau is able to break the tackle and, and go 60 yards. Timeout taken. That's the, that's the threat with him. He gets in the secondary, he's going to go. Doesn't appear that they have a whole lot of confidence in their passing game, does it? Well, that's what we saw on film. That's what we saw when we uh, uh, when we previewed uh, their pre their their past games and you know you you look for tendencies and the tendency is for them not to throw the football and they're sticking to their game plan they're keeping it on the ground whereas El Camino is 
putting it in the air. They're making uh, the receptions that they need to make to put points on the board. Good look at some of the men on the sideline. Zonenstein and others, number nine. Good halftime for you. We have the two coaches chatting about the West Valley League. Jason Zabalik and Marvin Straiton. All in the family with Zabalik talking to Zabalik. Love that segment. You ought to keep this center fielder, the safety deep, is the deepest receiver. Never let anybody get behind him, but he's not playing that. Leon looking to set it up and yep. throw the ball. Yep. yep. Tossing to the sideline and out of bounds. Well, that's, again, the fear that you, you're going to be desperate and, and you need to get your secondary, your safety, your free safety, as deep as the deepest receiver. You just don't give up any yardage underneath and, and, and deeper than, than what's in front of you. And you can see that Chatsworth is desperate. They're going to throw it up and do what they can to try to get on the scoreboard. Third down and two. They're going to convert here. El Camino may have another shot. Ramo will run it. Not enough for the first down and see if El Camino likes to take a timeout. Are they going to give him the first down here? Apparently they are. He did get enough. Looked like he was short, but they gave him forward progress to the first down sticks. So they'll run it with the quarterback, Leon. That's a good effort into El Camino territory, but you see the time winding down. Leon is very elusive in the open field. He can break it. You guys get away. Officials timeout. We have an El Camino player down. It's Gonzalez, but I think he's okay. He quickly gets to his feet. We're going to resume here pretty quickly. Jared's okay. So they're going to bring Chatsworth right back out there. First down at the 48 of ECR. Got to be careful here. Ramon is capable of busting it. We've seen that earlier tonight. It is Ramon twisting and turning, but not enough room for him to operate there. Chatsworth will take a timeout. Well, they're down to just nine seconds left. It's opening the, half. Last time out. Well, you think they'd throw it, but you just don't know when you have a running back like number 23, Isaiah Ramo. I suspect he's already got 100 yards in the first half. Well, yeah, the one big one, which uh, inflates the numbers. But you notice he just keeps pounding it and pounding it and pounding it, and he sees that gap, and he hits it, and it's off to the races. And again, he's not 100% either with that shoulder. At a high of 10, he had the pain of an 8 a couple weeks ago. This is the meter that Chatsworth used. He said he was down to 3, which is obviously a lot less, but still painful. So... Probably 70%, one would think, by their definition. The ball's on the ground. Doesn't really matter. The quarter and a half will run out. If El Camino recovered it, they might have a, a play in the bag. El Camino says they have the football. And apparently they do. No indication. Well, no, apparently not now because El no Camino defense is staying out there and then the clock should run out. And that's it. So the half ends. El Camino's leading 21 to 6. Your thoughts on half number one? Um, not surprised. I, I expected El Camino to throw the football. I expected Chatsworth to run the football and the mistakes at El Camino, it, it might have had another score had they not fumbled it early. And 
really made uh, a, a, an impact in the first half. Right now, Chatsworth has to regroup, and they have to look at what's on, what's ahead and, and uh, either adjust their game plan or continue to do what they do so that they can take advantage of any of those cracks in the defensive line. We're at the break. It's 21-6. to 6. It's time to meet our coaches up close and personal with Jason Zabalik and Marvin Street. Enjoy this chat. Thank you, Randy, and we're joined once again by Coach Marvin Street. Thanks for coming out and enjoying the uh, LA 36 limelight with us again, Coach. I just want to thank you for giving us the opportunity to come out here again. Uh, we're truly grateful for this opportunity. Now, we just got to uh, be entertained by what I thought was a, a pretty impressive junior varsity football game, a uh, very close contest uh, by both programs. And one of the things that I wanted to chat with you about is with the West Valley League being what it is nowadays, what is your preparation like? How do you guys do it over at your place? Well, we just have to start early for us because, you know, us at Chapter High School, we don't get kids with football experience. So we try to bridge that gap uh, as much as possible just by starting early and getting kids acclimated with the sport, the terminology, the, the structure, the, the requirements as far as the grit because we know the West Valley League is where it's at. So... It, you have to bridge the gap by preparation. <laughs> now, I mean, you hit the nail on the head right there with the West Valley League being where it is right now. Let's go back to 1998 Woo. real quick and talk a little bit about where you and I played in this league on the dirt fields, which are, some are still dirt, some are unplayable turf, but, you know, we'll leave that there. <laughs> um, but at the same token, it's a different level of play. Talk a little bit about what you see from your perspective. Well, I actually feel like the West Valley League is getting back to the form of where it was around that time. It's like everybody has guys now, and it's going to make it extremely competitive. And, you know, when it comes to the playoffs, I'm hoping that the West Valley League continues their dominance. So, Yes, the West Valley League is where it's at. Well, and, you know, when, when we played, every team was competitive, but yes. not every team had a guy. I remember, you know, uh, we had, uh, you know, Junior Brignac at Cleveland, oh, yeah. and, uh, you know, you had uh, Joe Shumpert at uh, Chatsworth, and, yeah, Quincy you know, Wright. Quincy Wright at El Camino, yeah. and, uh, you know, the long list of guys that came from Taft. And, you know, Birmingham was pedestrian back back in the days, and now they rule the roost. And, yeah. you know, what is your preparation like knowing that, you know, there's a couple of teams that kind of front load the conference, and, you know, and then we got all of us that are kind of fighting for uh, next best? All we try to do each and every year is bridge the gap. That's all we can do. It's like there's no need to sit here and stress ourselves over, because, uh, over the whole situation because – the top teams are where they are, and that's where they're going to be, and we have to just do what we got to do to chip away each and every season. Now, how do you get, you know, your program, your kids bought into this idea of trying to topple that monster? Well, to be honest with you, we don't even focus on it. We focus on the behaviors off the field. We focus on success in our personal lives, and we talk about how much that translates to the field. So it just comes with it. You know, the more success that we are having in our personal lives, it eventually transfers to the field. So. Oh, so you, so you mean the little things, right, yeah, Coach? The little so things. Can, can I get you to come and talk to my program? Because they don't seem to like to hear me say that over and over and over oh, yeah. again. But, you know, one of the biggest things, you know, for me as a, as a coach, watching the talent in this area come back is really important. You know, touch about how good that is for kids, especially in your area, neighborhood kids, going and priding themselves on football and academics well it's 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 a beauty you know it's like i've come to learn that most of these kids they want to be successful they want to make their parents proud they just need support you know and they ask for it in an indirect way they ask by saying i want to join football even though they have no idea about football right. so i see them craving it and i embrace them and it's it's a lot of work right. because a lot of kids don't have that prior achievement prior to coming uh, into football, whether it be through academics, the weight room, or football, or all three combined. So, like I said, we bring them in, we embrace them, and we put them through the ringer, and, you know, a lot of the kids, because of the, the support that we provide, they end up making it through, and we have had a con we have a continuum of success here at Chatsworth. You know, and I also think it's an accountability issue with Absolutely. kids nowadays a little Absolutely. bit, so much that they don't understand what goes into the grind 
to become what they want to be. They just want to be it. And the, the work ethic has to be at a certain level, yeah. you know, and you got kids that want to, you know, when you ask the question, who wants to play college football? Everybody raises their hand. Yeah. But what the disconnect, I think, and you guys probably experienced the same thing is, well, you can't just say it. you got to be about it every single day, every step of the way, no matter what, when it comes to being in class, when it comes to being in the weight room, when it comes to being out on the field and every rep out on the field. Yes. You know, and, I, you know, that's the one thing I will uh, give you guys over a chat with is, you know, you guys do a great job of getting that buy-in with those kids and, uh, you know, being a very well, detail-oriented type of program. Well, it's like, again, they don't all buy in initially, but then they start to see the success that they're having in their personal life. They see the relationships with their parents starting to get better with their teachers. You know, they see the uh, friends that are not looking out for them start to phase away. Then the buy-in be more. It's, it's a it's a process. So that's why I said we have to start early because of the lack of prior achievement. You know, so that's how we do it. Well, the one last thing that we'll bring up, and you touched on it a little bit earlier, was the playoffs. And you know, the, the I, I don't know if it's a good thing or bad thing. When we played, there was only two divisions. You had oh, yeah. the, the 4A and, and the, the 3A, 3A, and it was yes. only the top 16 and the next 16. Now, everybody gets an opportunity to go to the playoffs, so it's not about a matter of if, it's a matter of who you're going to play against yeah. and what kind of world do you guys fit into. And for us, you know, I think as a program, we stack up very well against our teams, you know, our two programs, the Clevelands, you know, uh, the Tafts, up and coming now. But it's a fight every week now. Oh, yeah, it is. And to be honest with you, I don't even worry about that. I'm worried about what our team GPA is going to be at the end of 10 weeks. I'm worried about how am I going to help the kid who's behind academically catch up and be on track to college. When the playoffs come, they come. We'll worry about it then, and we'll end up where we are, and then we'll deal with it then. So many things that we, <laughs> you know, other people take for granted that we have to do on a daily basis that a lot yeah. of people don't understand. It just goes underappreciated. So uh, definitely really appreciate what you guys do over at your program, and thanks again for joining us, Coach. Hey, thank you for having me. I'm really grateful, and hope we get to do it again. Fantastic. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Randy. I have an opportunity now again to talk to Coach Jason Sabalik, the head coach of the El Camino Real Royals and or Bears, depending upon how you see that mascot. Uh, coach, inquiring minds want to know, obviously the first question out of the gate is, what's the status of the field? Well, <laughs> that's a hot topic question uh, by, from everybody that we talk to. So far, um, apparently it's supposed to start in October sometime, finish in December. Um, right now we're playing our second home game here at Birmingham High School. We have uh, homecoming this evening, somewhat of a homecoming, homecoming, if you can classify it as such. Uh, we'll have our senior game at the end of the year here against Cleveland. Um, and so it's different, but at the end of the day, we had a pep rally today on campus and started to feel kind of like old times again. So. Good. Well, this has to be a challenge for you traveling every game. It has to take its toll, not only on your players, but on your coaching staff, preparing and, and getting ready for a different venue every week. Well, not a lot of people understand. I'm glad you kind of hit that uh, topic because not a lot of people understand what it takes to go into a travel game. You have to get everybody ready to go. You have to get everything loaded on the buses. Um, it, God forbid you forget the water jugs. You don't have water. You got to get the camera containers, set up the camera. When we could do that at home normally, easily, during our conference period or prep period, before the end of the school day, so that when the JV game starts, everything is ready to go when you're at home. And that's part of home field advantage. But it's not just that. It's playing in front of that screaming crowd, you know? I mean, we're probably, I think they said the ticket sales are somewhere around 1100 for a game here off campus. But normal homecomings on campus, you would see three to 4,000 screaming fans. I remember a couple years ago when we played Chatsworth at home, right at the end uh, when we came out of the pandemic, it was our first home game uh, coming out of the pandemic. And the crowd was so raucous. I had the double headphones on and I still couldn't hear what the coaches were talking about on the headsets. And that was a home crowd. And I mean, that invigorates a team. It adds, I think, momentum-wise, 14 points, a good 14 points of home field, plus 
the mental stress and strain of traveling and boarding the bus and getting off the bus and making sure you're on time and you know traffic what happens if there's traffic and we have to travel far you know something like that might come up and so you never know so it really is a challenge and you got to do it every week you just you have to have a tougher uh, skin than than normal right and again all of your coaches take on collateral duties with that as well they're not just concerned about x's and o's they got to make sure their players are taken care of the players are here they're always looking to make sure all of those those checklists are taken care of and and that sometimes is going to take away from us taking care of the x's and o's on the field because we're so concerned with the look. We're so concerned with having everybody in the right place at the right time and making sure that it's, uh, I mean, it's a production. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about it, just like a television production, a football game is a production, not just from the uh, audiovisual standpoint, but from the production of the kids on the field and how they perform and what goes into all of that. So it is difficult from week to week. And another thing that you have to be able to do is to make sure you're taking care of these new transfers. I understand you've got some new players coming in, and tell us a little we bit do. about them. So uh, right after the first week of school, um, LA Unified closed down North Valley Military Institute, and because of that, they were an eight-man football program. So because of that, their student athletes were allowed to transfer without getting docked any weeks. They didn't have to sit out. So we got six transfers from North Valley Military. One of the dads that uh, of our players worked on campus there, so we knew the players. It was a good home for them, um, and they've been great ever since. Of those, um, two kids right now are really sticking out. Javon Cagua, number 31, he quietly had six tackles last week against Narbonne. Um, he's going to get a lot of playing time at safety. Um, and then uh, the big guy, Dustin Colin Berrios, we're getting him up to speed on the line, and so you'll see him a little bit here and there. We also have Dayon Coulter, number 14. He's a transfer from Aceta. He sat out last year. He's a senior. He played in the Narbonne game but got dinged up and hurt in the first quarter, so we didn't get a chance to see a lot of him. Um, we're looking to get uh, Nick Genovese going, running back from Calabasas. We're still waiting on uh, his grades and transcript to clear. He's going to be a welcomed addition in the backfield. So. We got a good group of incoming guys that are going to give us the depth that we need to go deeper into the season. And you start bringing up playoffs and everybody going to a playoff. So now you're going into week 11, week 12, week 13. That depth really helps out a lot. Which, again, you will be playing on the road. Uh, if, even if you have the advantage of winning the division or winning the league, you have the opportunity of having home field advantage, but in your case, you won't. Well, and that's what happened to us last year against Fairfax. We were the number four seed in Division One. Fairfax came in as the number 12 seed. We played the game at Agora High School because that was deemed as the only place that we can find a field at that date and time. And uh, our kids were just burnt out. They were burnt out not playing at home. They were burnt out not playing in front of their peers. And it showed on the field. You know, yeah. we played against a team that shouldn't have beaten us, and they beat us. And they did so pretty handedly, and then they went on to lose the next week to Cleveland. But we should have won that game. We should have gotten the rematch with Cleveland. And like I said, it does take its toll eventually as the weeks go on and on. Tell me about preparation. Uh, although you're on the field and you're working in practices every day, tell me about the new technologies that support your practices. And a lot different than my day. We, we really didn't have the benefit of computer vision and huddle and all those other kind of software programs well huddle's a great tool i am such a big proponent as a teaching tool we get the end zone view of the games we get the sideline view of the games so it really gives us an opportunity when we watch film on saturdays to show the kids what they're doing wrong and to be able to make corrections but not only that we get analytics and when i was at moore park college and at the junior college level the college level it's all about the analytics you know but uh, the analytics are great, but the analytics don't tackle a guy on the field, you know. And so it, it's great to have the analytics. It's great to have the support. But just the teaching aspect of giving these kids a bigger football IQ, because a lot of the kids that we see, especially at our school nowadays, they've never played football before. These kids don't even watch football. They don't watch college football. They don't watch – I mean, they'll watch NFL, but they'll watch the highlights. And watching the highlights doesn't show you the grind that it was required the week to week. And so – it's a little bit better, I think, having that as a tool for this um, 
group of football. So in prepping for that kind of, of technology, it also is an investment. When we talked about your players not playing in the home field, then not having that, that attendance also damages the fundraising possibilities that can help contribute to your program as well. Not not, not having a snack shack, not right, having a merchandise right. table, not having the ticket sales on campus. Not only does it hurt us, but it hurts the, stu the whole student body because right. uh, our student body collects the gate at our home games. And so once again, it, there's, there's nobody that wins. It's a lose-lose. And so you just got to try to find the best way to spin it to make them understand that Sometimes life's going to be a lose-lose, and you just got to put up no matter what. Well, very good, Coach, and it's a great halftime interview with you. I really appreciate it. And, again, best of luck for the rest of the season, and we'll see you again down the line. Sounds good. Thank you. Zabalik and Zabalik, we call it all in the family. We're at halftime. You can see it's 21-6. to I have a few more minutes. Uh, it's an elongated halftime because it is – uh, a honeymoon of sorts here for ECR. It is their homecoming game, even though it's at Birmingham. We have some highlights in the first half in this 21-6 lead for Elko. They played really good, Paul, and early on to the air they go to Jake Shirley in a touchdown. Well, you know, we've talked about Jake Shirley uh, numerous times, and he is the playmaker. He is the difference on the Elko team, and uh, where Shirley goes, Elko goes, and, and he showed that tonight so far, and I'm sure he's not done. Here's Ramos 62-yard touchdown dash. He is an athlete. You give him a, a, a little crack in the line, and he will get into the secondary. Adrian Walker showing some toughness in a score. He was not to be denied on that play. He was going to stay in that end zone and get to it and make it happen. How about this one? 40 yards in the air to Jong. Touchdown ECR. And you can see how wide open he was, and Hawkins was able to put the ball right where he needed to. How you draw it up on the chalkboard. Pretty good half for ECR. All right, now let's take you into the mind of Marvin Street, the coach at Chatsworth. You're down 21-6. You really haven't had a passing game at all. Uh, you, you rely on Ramon. He had the great one run of 62 yards. Where do you go with their offense? Because they need to make up 15 points. Well, the, the one thing about a running attack offense is that it takes a lot of clock time, and it runs it down, and, and they have to maintain possession of the ball, go down and score, get the ball back as quickly as they can defensively, and then, again, sustain drives. It just takes time off the clock. And they can, they, uh, you know, they can score 14 points in, in two possessions. They just keep the clock running. They keep the ball moving down the field. And, and Marvin Street, in, in my estimation, will continue to do what they're trained to do, and that's to run the football either in an I formation or an offset fullback. And they're showing you where they're going to go. They're telling you what they're going to do, and you have to stop them. We're seeing new players tonight, and a new one for Chatsworth, Ahmad Odom, number 21. We weren't sure who he was at the beginning because he just got his number. And he's 21, and we finally figured that out. And he's a tremendous defensive player for Chatsworth. Well, he got off the ball very quickly, and you, you cannot allow that kind of strength and force to get an edge on you. And, and he was able to penetrate the backfield unblocked because of his quickness getting off the ball. And, and they have to find a way to stop him. And, and my guess is Elko will start throwing some screen passes and draw plays to nullify that rush. All right, you're El Camino Royale. You're up 21-6. to six. You had a pretty good outburst. I mean, 21 first-half points. If you look at their numbers over the year, this is the most points they've scored in a game. The previous high was 19 in the game we had against Heritage Christian. So this is the most points Elko scored this season. So where do you go from here? Well, you just keep doing what you're doing. Again, Elko has the ability to throw the football. They have the ability to, to get receivers open. Chatsworth is playing them very, very soft. Uh, they're giving them a huge cushion, and those receivers will get open, and Hawkins needs to see them quicker and make the play. And I don't see anything changing. I don't think Coach Hayashida's offense is going to change what they're doing, and what they do well is is put the ball in the air. We saw Kagwa make a play, number 31 on defense from North Valley Military. We also saw number 14 in action in the first half, Dayon Coulter, make some catches. The new guys. Right. right. And those, those are the ones that Coach Svalik is hoping will make a difference in, in league play. 
Uh, they're coming in. They're learning the system. They're learning the program. Uh, every day they're adapting, and they're getting more experience. And uh, he, he's going to need that against Granada Hills and against uh, Birmingham. Cleveland's not bad either. Pretty good league in the West Valley. League, I, I think it? just about anybody and everybody can uh, can make it happen on on any any given day. I mean, Birmingham is vulnerable. We saw that they they played against two teams outside a league and uh, were, were dominating. Uh, and Granada Hills the same way. So, if the ball bounces your way, you can make a difference. But again, those are the two dominant teams in the West Valley: Granada and Birmingham. Yes, Cleveland coach Gunny. Uh, a very old friend of mine uh, uh, has built a program at Cleveland, and he's very proud of what he's done, and I give him a lot of credit. Uh, he's done some really special things. And again, next week we'll be back on the air on LA 36 in Woodland Hills. Taft, the other member of the West Valley League, they've put up some huge numbers offensively. They had some issues on defense. They're vulnerable there, but offensively, they got some big-time talent, Leor Lesham, Guy had eight touchdowns in a game earlier this year, a school record. Well, from from what we've heard about Taft, and I and I can't say uh, you know that I have watched them specifically, uh, but the the uh, uh, the scouting report on Taft is that they're going to throw the football every chance they get. Uh, they're going to throw 60 passes a game, and uh, they score points. Uh, but again, they've got to be able to keep the other team from scoring points. Yeah, so we'll have the Toreadors. Next week at another seven o'clock start, Taft is two and three, starting this week's play. And again, they've had some unbelievable scoring games at Taft this year. You know, I think back to that 78-41 victory they had against Grant. That's the game where Lesham just uh, went off. Mm-hmm. Well, although they're having a tough time, they're getting hammered tonight by Cleveland. I I would expect that to happen. Uh, coach Gunny is a, is an excellent football coach, and he is able to to assess. The difference, he's able to, to scout teams and look at where they're vulnerable and take advantage of it. ECR will get the football to begin uh, the second half. We'll get to see number 12, Kevin Hawkins, operate, and he had a very productive first half. He puts the football up, and he's uh, also got feet to run, and uh, he's the 12th man when he runs. He's able to, to, to show pass and get out of the pocket and make gains. This is that bomb over the middle to Jong. Excellent concentration on the catch. So those guys will be back out there, and ECR will be out on offense to begin the third quarter. We'll see what the two coaches did in terms of adjustments. If you're ECR, you got to be thrilled. If you're Chatsworth, you're not happy right now, and you Hope you can come back and have a much better second half. Well, let's see if, if Chatsworth makes the adjustments on the secondary and, and they start to press those receivers a little bit. So Chatsworth will be kicking it away. El Camino will get it. Chatsworth come in here with an average of 38 points a game. But they were bottled up in that first half by a tenacious defense of ECR. Been a long halftime because of the homecoming. Must have been a half an hour show, and the fans here enjoyed it. A little bit of a delay here, I think. Uh, waiting for everyone to come back. One of the officials might have gone. On a little bit of a break, a little hiatus. I also want to add that that the team that makes the fewer mistakes in the second half will probably be the win. Marcel Ramirez will tee it up and kick it away. Ramirez, a senior. First little guy, the kicker. Played defensive back. Wide receiver. Yeah, I don't I don't see Mike Good out there, the lead official. 
Uh, he's back at the other end of the stadium. And I'm not exactly sure what the delay is. I think they just put a few extra minutes on and elongate the intermission. I don't know why they do this. I've seen them do it a few times. Well, that's a very good question. The players are ready to go. It's above my pay grade. Are they getting paid by the hour? Well, uh, maybe these, you know, they're, trying. they're punching I'm, a clock out there. I'm, I'm negotiating with the commentator. Well, Marcel's got it teed up. We're about ready to go for the third quarter. Better late than never. This one is returnable. It's muffed, picked up by Sanders, and he's belted down. Now that's twice that Sanders has bobbled the, the, the reception, and uh, if he does it again, it's going to be a possible uh, fumble, and uh, Chatsworth can, can pick it up. And, and, again, I don't know why Sanders is not catching the ball, and it's bouncing in front of him, and that could be dangerous uh, for El Camino. He's a guy, though, that can stretch the field. Saw him have that big-time touchdown at Heritage Christian. Did matriculate out to the 20-yard line, and Hawkins is back in to quarterback the team. 21-6. ECR would love a sustained drive to begin the third quarter and try to put Chatsworth away. Hawkins immediately to the air to Shirley. Kevin Del Toro with the stop. They're still giving him that cushion, so Shirley's going to get five or eight yards every time he catches the ball in the flat. Jake has 38 catches with the five tonight on the year, five touchdowns. Not to be overlooked is his fine play as a defensive end. He doesn't leave the field. He's there 48 minutes. I admire those kind of guys. You'll see them sprinkled throughout high school football where players just don't get off the field, and Shirley's one of those guys. Second down and five. Sanders on the fly, sweep of the flag down. He's got a good run, and in all probability, this is coming back. And that's what we talked about, the speed of Sanders. He's celebrating, but I don't think this one's going to count. Well, the officials will confer. Great run by Jalen. That's the speed we talked about earlier. If he gets in the open field, he'll break it. But it's going to look like it's called back. Ball start. We'll bring it all the way back. It's going to be a five-yard penalty. Repeat, second down. Boy, that one hurts. Oh. El Camino's had just a couple penalties tonight, but they've really hurt themselves on both occasions. Again, these are both long plays, long drives, and, and, and long gainers, and they get called back. They can't make those mistakes. We've talked about that. Sanders, though, showing great explosiveness there. Look at the celebration. Instead... It's a negative play of five because of the penalty. <sighs> Coaches lose their hair over those. Hawkins and company will dial it up again. Hawkins in trouble. Hawkins goes down, and there's that man again. Number 21, Ahmad Odom. Odom is everywhere. Unblock. He's a menace you defensively. You can't let him lose to, to, to wreak havoc on your backfield. He's got to stay at the line of scrimmage. And for Hawkins... 
You go back to the drawing board. And you see how a little penalty kills your momentum, kills your drive. Keeps Chatsworth in the game. That touchdown stands. Chatsworth's really in trouble here. Renewed life. Third and long. That's great pocket protection. Behind Sanders and no good. Again, if you look at the flat, who do you see there wide open? Play was available. It was there. Oh, yeah. That comes with experience for Hawkins. He's got to learn to see that and recognize it and, and recognize it immediately. He can't delay. He can't go through progression and, and, and then come back to it because by then they've, they've converged on the open receiver. Ocentra will kick from somewhere around the five-yard line. Barely got that one out of harm's way. But a good kick with a favorable roll. Just into Chatsworth territory. But that penalty, instead of being a three-touchdown game, is suddenly two scores. Chatsworth now has the ball in nice field position. The midfield strike. Well, let's see if Coach Street keeps it on the ground and keeps his game plan and sees if he can run the clock and score and then come back and do it again. Adrian Sarsange is a big kid, number 70. They like to run behind him. Sarsange is 6'3", 250 pounds, but a sophomore. Rameau is stood up. Sacks the first to get in there, and he was not alone. Caden McCoy was another one. And they are going back to their fullback lead, that, that traditional offensive set. And they're going to key on that fullback, on that lead running back, and that'll tell you where Rameau's going to go. Seems simple to stop. It isn't, though. Well, it's not when you've got a running back like that because he can find the little crease and he can bust it. 67 but is John Monroy. Now it's the... Rameau again is hitting his backfield. That's a tremendous defensive effort by Bogaz. Shane Bogaz was in his face immediately. Defensively, it looked like El Camino has made some changes on the defensive line, and they're closing that gap, and they're getting, they're getting penetration. Once you get penetration by a defensive lineman, the offensive lineman can't recover, and that's where you can throw their back for a loss. Third and long for the Chancellor. Rameau had the one big burst. And for the most part, they bottled him up. Full back lead again. They pitch it to Rameau. He's going wide. He's in trouble spinning. But there are a lot of blue shirts there. And you got to love that they're tackling the ball. And Bogaz again, 21, leading the charge. That's great defense by the Royals. Yeah, they tried to get Rameau outside, uh, outside the tackle, but... Again, you key on that guy, and he's going to tell you where Rameau's going to be, and you just tackle him, and you get body on him. Uh, you can you can take him down. He breaks arm tackles. Fourth down and nearly 11 for a beleaguered Chatsworth team. So Anthony Barboza run onto the field tardy, but he's able to get set. It's a good punt. Fielded near side. With it is Gagwa. Gagwa still going. Excellent return. Out to the 40-yard line. Great field position for Elko. Now that's where they need to get the ball every time, not within their 20. If they can start midfield, they'll uh, keep the momentum. And Gagua from North Valley Military, one of the transfers that came in for ECR. He was able to catch the bounce right, and uh, he was just able to take off. Again, he's got the quickness and the speed. He's one of those guys Coach was talking about earlier that can make things happen. 
Well, good field position for El Camino Real. Looking for one more, looking for a haymaker. Seven minutes to play, third quarter. Pitch power for Elko now, it looks like. 21-6 Royals. Looking for a spot to run. There's nothing there for Walker. He's pinned again. Let me tell you, this Odin is tremendous. So quick off the ball, 21. And you'll see he's unblocked if you look at that play again. Uh, he just... He breaks the line of scrimmage, and, and you can't block him. He make, he's, he'll make stuff happen defensively. They've got to find a way to, to contain him. Trotting out of the field, number 16, Jaden Williams. The guy that can go deep, stretch defenses for ECR. We've seen him on kick returns tonight. 14 is the new guy on the block, Coulter. They really like him, the transfer. 6-10, left third quarter. Hawkins eluding the pressure. He's a big body, tough to bring down. That should be a late hit and is. Easy play to call. Got a stop your progress. You don't want to hit a quarterback out of bounds like that, and that's exactly what Lisandro Fighter did. There are three officials saw that one. Dead ball. Personal foul. Defense. 15-yard penalty. First down. One thing about most of the penalties tonight, Paul, they have been obvious. It makes your coach uh, hold his breath, too, when you see your quarterback get hit out of bounds. You just uh, hope he gets up. That was very tardy. Yeah, it was not uh, not appropriate. Would be a fine way to describe that. Well, suddenly, El Camino to the 35 of Chatsworth. You notice the cushion on the defensive secondary here. They're not as deep as they were. That was the coach's adjustment at halftime. Coulter eludes one. Coulter Still going. Spinning. Nice gain by this young, talented football player. And lesson learned. He's holding on to that ball every now time he gets hit. Deion Coulter. Six foot, 180 pounds. He's a senior. Uh, unfortunately for ECR, that one's going to get wiped out. Probable to hold. It was a holding foul. It nullifies big gains. You, you see this happen, and it just, you pull a hair out every time. Remains first down. And very long. They need 20. See if they go back to Jake Shirley, who's been their money man, number five, in the passing game. Pressure on Hawkins. He's in trouble. There's Odin again. How many tackles does this young man have? I counted five, but he's, you know, unblocked, and he's just getting, uh, he's making penetration, and they're just not, uh, the, the tackle has got to do a better job on him. Hawkins is over to the sideline probably saying, somebody get a glove on 21. <laughs> and Hawkins has to get rid of the ball quicker. He's, uh, you know, he can't just hold on to it and take the hits like that. He's a strong-looking guy. He is walking uh, somewhat gingerly back to the huddle, but he's a mountain of a young man. He's tough. He's durable. He's fighting off. A concussion, but he's not afraid of contact. Down to four minutes left in the third. You see the numbers on the side of ECR. ECR looking real good tonight. Into and out of the hands of Shirley. A little bit low on the throw. He's got to see him a little quicker. He, Shirley's wide open on the break, and he's got to get the ball to him and Shirley, let Shirley run. 
It's turning loose. Catch the ball. Throw and catch. Real quick. One would think, uh, Paul, this is a must stop for Chatsworth. They got to keep ECR from moving the sticks. All right. But that again, that might have been a catchable ball, though. Well, I think uh, Jake would tell you he should catch that ball. A little earlier step. One, two, throw. Third and 26. Back to the same play. Go right back to the well. So it's the, it's there. A little bit deeper pattern. John nearly had it. Incomplete. A near miss. That was well defended, though, in the deep secondary, broken up by Nathan Vargas. It was a big stop by Elko's defense, and they had to take advantage of it. Well, the punting unit back on for the Royals. Coulter was wide open on the right side by the sideline. And again, Hawkins couldn't couldn't see him. Chatsworth is hanging around in this ball game. Another returnable one. Some fancy moves. There goes Ramo again. Isaiah Ramo. Touchdown, Chatsworth. He just makes plays. And Chatsworth is back in the hunt. Why kick it to him? This, the, if, if you know the, he's out there, you got to kick it speaks, away from him. speaks for itself. I mean, there's no superlative that can, can give him better descriptor than just watch him run. How about the fancy footwork? Well, that's, again, you, you can't give enough superlatives for that. Is there a flag down? I don't think that's going to count. And how about this? Didn't see the penalty. Did you see it? I did not, but it was another mistake. Again, nullifying great play. You have an athlete that's just open field, and you get it called back. It, it, it's just a, a really disappointing uh, performance when when you nullify that kind of great athletic achievement, and you see it, and you know this person has done great things, and it gets called back. Both teams have been hit. Both big exactly. penalties on yeah. long touchdowns. Exactly right. And this one is devastating to Chatsworth. Takes it all the way back to the 35. Instead of being a one score game, it's still 21 to 6. But it's still fun to watch Isaiah go. Oh, he's, he's, a, he's a talent. We knew that coming in. We saw it from last year. A reprieve for the Royals. But they've got to stop the run here. They've got to just get get the seven men up on the line of scrimmage because Chatsworth probably won't throw the ball. Ramo just getting warmed up. Another flag. Another good game, by the way. Chased out of bounds by Kona Malig. They want that. That is illegal formation offense. Five yard penalty, still first down. Again, Chatsworth hurts themselves. Yep. If I'm Ramo, I'm frustrated. I just made two great plays, one sensational. This one a solid effort of but you notice yards, they, and doesn't, they both get wiped out. He doesn't quit. He just keeps coming back, keeps coming back at you, keeps coming back at you, and it's gonna break again. He'll see it. Still got to be frustrated. Oh, yeah. Well, let's try it again with number 23. Isaiah this time is hit, and down he goes. Zonenstein got him, number nine. Ramo is more effective between the tackles. He's got to stay within the tackles, not get outside. Uh, he's got the opportunity to break it through the center and get to the secondary very, very quickly. Straight line. Warren Zonenstein. 
185 pound senior. He plays some running back, but he's been utilized as the linebacker in the middle for ECR. Rameau again has some room. Bouncing outside. Battling close to the sticks. He is one tough young guy. Again, notice he's between the tackles. He makes his biggest yardage between the tackles. Never getting outside the tackles. He's he's able to see the crack and the seam, and he hits it. The customary passing downs are not passing downs with Chatsworth. They just rely on that ground game. You see we're inside of two minutes. Left in the third. No scoring in the quarter, although that's really a lie. There's been a lot of scores that have been pulled off the board. Right, right. But we talked about ground and pound, and that's what Chatsworth does. Probably a run to the right. Nope, they're going to go back to the left, away from the run. The fullback and down the sideline, and running with it is Benji Gomez. And that's the counter. That's the one that they come back on because, again, you see the overload, and they've been running to that fullback side, fullback side, and then they counter it, and, and he's able to make the gains. But that will only happen once or twice. They won't be able to bust that at all every time. Well, they're moving steadily to the 41 and have a first down, and it gave Ramoa a little bit of a respite. Ball's back on the ground. Leon's in trouble. Somehow got away and turned a negative into a positive. Pure athleticism. Sam Sachs tackled him, but uh, to the credit of the quarterback, Jesse Leone, pivoted and made a nice play. Chatsworth, if they could punch this in here, they're right in the hunt. Again, just keep doing what they're doing and use the time on the clock for their benefit. Keep Ramo between the tackles. Ramo, there he is. See, that's that's the effectiveness of that of that run game. Down to the 25 and another first down. The battering ram continues to battle. He sure doesn't look hurt, does he? Well, again, it's about pain tolerance in the shoulder, and apparently. He certainly can handle the pain. He's dealing it out. Yeah, he, he's giving people pain. Chatsworth, though, eating up the clock with the drive. Inside of a minute to play. Gomez, it's open for him. He's gone. Touchdown, Benji Gomez. You keep hitting it, you keep hitting it, you keep hitting it, you make a crack in the wall, and then it gets bigger and bigger and bigger, and boom, the flood. Well, suddenly it's 21-12. They will apparently kick it here with Marcel Ramirez make it an eight-point game. It's a key point after. Final 39 seconds of the third quarter. And he's got it. And indeed, it's 21-13. And Chatsworth, they're there. And you can see how they can wear you down. Well, that's what we talked about. And that's exactly what their game plan is going to be. El Camino's got to get tougher up front. They've got to get that penetration. Like we talked about, the defensive line has to penetrate across the offensive line and make the plays. When they do that, they stop Ramo. Now they need to answer. El Camino needs to take the ball and go down the field and score. That can nullify what just happened. Well, ECR's got to stop with the penalties, and so does Chatsworth in many respects. Chatsworth was able to overcome the infractions. That's correct. That touchdown makes this West Valley League opener mighty interesting. As we thought it would be. And next week we'll have Taft from Woodland Hills in Woodland Hills against the Royals. Sanders. Blasted. You know who. Nobody blocked. Ahmad Odin. No one blocked. Late flat. Right. 
Everybody, okay, okay, you grab that ball. Tell you this, Chatsworth is motivated. You got a dead ball on sportsmanlike conduct this way. 15 yard penalty, first down. Again, both teams hurting themselves with penalty. There was no blocking on the part of El Camino's special teams. He, Sanders had no chance to get through that, that penetration. Well, with the penalty, it takes it out across the 30 to the 31. There's Monroy. He's a tough young man, 57. Blocking back on offense. And he'll tag you pretty good on defense as a DE defensive end. We have a timeout call from the sideline by El Camino. They didn't like the way they're running that play. I'm not sure what that uh, penalty or why that timeout happened. Like they weren't aware of the offense, didn't know what the play was. Well, we have some uh, programming reminders for you. Prep Sports Night Live. One hour program, Wednesday at 7. And they, they have a good time. They frolic all around. Rich Estrella and Bob Gibson, they've been doing it for years. They know as much as anyone in the prep world. Very knowledgeable guys. Then we'll have SoCal Prep Report. Live Thursdays at 9 p.m. I'll be joined by the astute Tark Fatal from SB Live, and he'll break down all the results, talk about the upcoming key games, and he is uh, one knowledgeable young man. We can tell you that Birmingham is shutting out Granada Hills tonight in the other big West Valley League game. Last time we checked, they were up 17-0. To the air, and this one is not held by John. Chatsworth has the momentum here. Even though the score is in favor of El Camino, you just sense you did. that it's turning you? around. Exactly. And you did. feel it also. We talk, Yeah, we talked about that. You, you can see it and sense it. But you can also see the adjustments Chatsworth made on defense. They're not giving the cushion any longer to those receivers. They're coming up tight, and, and, and Hawkins isn't making the adjustment. He should be thrown uh, uh, real uh, hitches and go, hitch and go deep. That The deep patterns are open right now. Well, let's see if ECR can hit a big one. But they got to block 21. Odin's been great. A run to keep some pressure off of Hawkins. Walker. Nowhere to roam. Monroy tackled him. Fans having a great time on homecoming. Taking pictures of Paul Zabalik. <laughs> you were signing a lot of autographs, weren't you, before the game? Hey. If they want him, I'll give it to him. Your hand's probably tired but from I don't know, signing. I don't know why anybody would. No, I mean, come on, you're... Pretty good player at the University of Washington. The of the That's quarter. the end of the third quarter. And after three, it's Elko by 21-13. Your impression's going to the fourth. The momentum has shifted. Chatsworth clearly has it in their favor right now. And El Camino's got to step up, and they've got to be able to say, uh, you ain't taking this from me, and, and make plays. There's Rick Hayashida, the offensive coordinator. He's going to have to dial up a third and eight. What do you want to see here on third and eight? I you would see, think it's a pass. I, wanna, I, I want to see a hitch and go. I want to see him throw the, 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 the fade if necessary. I want him to be able to go deep because Chatsworth has given him that. Well, John hit for a big one early in the game. He caught a 40-yarder on a post pattern. Shirley's touchdown was more yak. He caught the short pass and just broke tackles and ran down the sideline. But here they need eight to keep the drive going and, more importantly, keep it away from the offense of Chatsworth. Exactly. They've got to be able to make this first down, and they've got to take the, 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 the drive down the field and score. This is a big play for El Camino. We begin the fourth quarter. 
That'll cost Chatsworth five unless there was movement in the front. You'll notice that's how Odin gets his edge. Oh, he anticipates the, the, the count, and he's able to get across the line of scrimmage and make those plays. Makes the third, third down, down play a little bit different. Now they have the option, one would think, to run. Instead of third and eight, it's third and three. Yeah, but they're still going to throw it, is my guess. And, and here's the guy they're going to go to right here. Jake Shirley in the slot. But notice they got, they're coming up tight on him now. Hawkins goes down. Wow. And the defense of Chatsworth stands tall. Wow. They're coming on. A furious pass rush. They're no unblocked. chance for Hawkins. They're unblocked. You cannot unblock this guy. You've got to block him. Odin's up for player of the year in the league after this performance. Maybe. That's just, uh, that's unacceptable if you're an offensive line coach to see that. Well, again, it's a one-score game, 21-13. Over the years, El Camino's had some issues with the long snap. Let's see if this one is on target. Watrin is the long snapper. It's not bad there, and it's Ocentra getting... It cleanly away in a favorable roll, and it's a pretty good job. It was almost blocked. They've come close a few times. Yeah. It's not what you want to see on special teams. Well, there's still nearly 11 minutes left. Chatsworth Plenty has cut time. it to an eight-point game. Plenty of time. And they can stay with their game plan. Plenty of time. Each team has had a long touchdown wiped out. Each team has hurt themselves with some penalties, but there has also been some big plays that have stood up. Jesse Leone leading the charge back the other way for Chatsworth. Rameau. Got a few there. If he the waiting slipped, arms of Sam Sachs. If he hadn't slipped, he could have broken it. He slipped and, and uh, lost his balance. But that hole was wide open. Again, between the tackles, that's where Elko is vulnerable right now. They're just not penetrating. They're just not getting across the line of scrimmage. Their offensive line for Chatsworth is handling them. Didn't like there was a whole lot there, but he's still got close to five yards. And he would have had more if he hadn't slipped. Second down call. Rameau in trouble, spins away. That's a great job by the running back. He looked like he was going to get taken down on the backfield. Got there right up near the first down yard marker. That's just an effort play. It is. It's an athlete. That's what you refer to what an athlete really does. They're going to give him a great spot in a first down. Got to move the sticks, guys, on that far sideline. And, boy, was that charitable where they put it. But, again, that's a tribute to Rameau. First down to the 46. Rameau again. There he goes, bouncing outside. Isaiah Rameau. What a run. Touchdown, Chatsworth. Isaiah Rameau. We talked about it. We talked about it, and we talked about it. It's almost as if we drew it up. You're seeing some effort. By Rameau. But notice how he gets through the first line and he's into the secondary in two seconds. Down by two. They have the kicker out there. That's surprising. It is. Still with 940 left. That tells you that Marvin Street loves the momentum of the game. Feels like his team can get defensive stops and get the ball back. You can sense it, couldn't you? Yeah, we've talked about it. It's a one-point game. You feel it now, don't you? You feel it. I got to think when you we got Ramo out there, though, you have so many options with your running game. I might go for two, but I'm not going to fault Marvin. He knows his team really well. And in all candor, they're dominating the game right now. They're, they're the, I mean, again, you got plenty of time. Once he breaks that first level, he's gone. There's nobody left. 
There's no linebackers. There's no secondary. He's busted it. And you can see it. You draw it up on the chalkboard the same way. He's one of those guys on our show. We, we have a category with great games from the week before. And Ramo seems to be on our list. So does Brady Smigel, the great quarterback at Newberry Park. He throws six touchdowns every week. And there's a lot of different guys that we put up on the screen over the weeks that have had great games. But uh, Isaiah has been up there a few times. because, And you can see why. He's just a gifted running back. Yes, he is. And they got to... They got to put 21 in in a, in a corner and not let him penetrate the line of scrimmage again. The, the coaches have to see that and make a special effort to stop certain people. That's called an adjustment during the game. That's uh, making a, a a decision game time decisions. El Camino needs something positive to happen. Right now, it's all downhill in favor of Chatsworth. You've heard of downhill runners. Well, right now they're playing downhill. We saw a little bit of this last year between these two teams. El Camino was able to make enough big plays to win at Chatsworth. Sanders faking the reverse, and he's in trouble. Broke a tackle. Tremendous effort by Jalen. He made... A play out of something that could have been disastrous. That was all him. That was 15 yards worth of effort. Now El Camino's got to make some very, very short, quick passes and move the ball down the field. They can't start running the ball. That's not their mod- modus. They got to throw the ball, quick, short pitches, and then go deep. And I know Coach Hayashida sees that. It's really a passing team against an artful running team at this juncture. Walker is the lone running back. He's right next to Hawkins. And they run with Walker. Maybe three. Again, that's a fired-up defensive front. Leif Cassone with the tackle. It's a defensive tackle, just a sophomore. This is now, nine test, minutes left. Test Elko's offensive line. Now they've got to make, they've got to penetrate that D line. They've got to get across the line of scrimmage first. They've got to nullify 21's charge. And traps will do that if they they run a counter. They'll they'll see you'll see what happens. Between five and six is needed. That's nearly intercepted. I don't know Coulter what, was the target, but that could have been intercepted and run back. Uh, again, I don't know what Hawkins is throwing. At. I mean, that's just not the pattern. That's just not what he should be doing. Yeah, Quentin Collins was close to giving Chatsworth the lead. That's all it takes. There's a huge third down play for the 6-4 sophomore of ECR. They need at least six for the first. Back to the air to Shirley. Got a first down. Huge play by the veteran Jake Shirley. Chatsworth goes to Rameau. Elko goes to Shirley. And again, how short was that pass? That's exactly what they have to do. He dumped it right now. Boom. Done. Wide open. Sabotted him out of bounds at the 43. One point game, fourth quarter. On the ground, Walker. He does hit the hole quickly, and we've mentioned that. I like the way he runs the football at the point of attack. Well, they got their communications down now. Remember in the first quarter, he went to the wrong hole, and Hawkins almost fumbled the ball. Gain of five, second and five. At least 
they're taking some of the pressure off the passing game. Positive plays in the run game. Yes, again, to nullify that, that charge by the defensive line. They've got to keep 21 on the line of scrimmage. Don't let him cross it. See that clock inside of eight minutes to play. A nail biter in Lake Balboa. Homecoming for El Camino Royale. Back to the ground game. Walker twisting and turning and battling. Did he lose it? Chatsworth football. Collins comes out of there with it. And this game is completely turned around. <laughs> That's what we talked about. I, I can't remember a game where we, you could just sense it. Even when it was 21-6, to six, when the Sanders penalty nullified the long touchdown, kind of took the air out of ECR's balloon. And you just feel like Chatsworth believes they're going to pull the game out. Told you. Not over yet. El Camino's defense asked to make a stand. Ramo with running room. We've seen this before. Isaiah Ramo. How good is this guy? Touchdown Chatsworth. He's a one-man wrecking crew. I don't, I, 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 there's nothing I can say that can top that. I mean, that's just superlative, outstanding football player. Be careful over there, guys. He's, he's your franchise. <laughs> I know you want to mob him. Give Marvin Street some credit. Remember, he went for the one, believing they'd get the ball back, and they did. So Chatsworth has the lead. Low snap. It's collected, though, and the PAT is added as Ramirez drives it through. 27-21 Chatsworth. Well, we're now going to test the character of El Camino. They've got plenty of time to take the ball down the field and, and make it happen. This is a test of their character. Who's going to show up now for the next... Uh, Seven minutes. Well, you almost have to score. You, you can't feel good about giving it back to Chatsworth because you don't know if you can stop that guy anymore. Three touchdowns without a response. Three long touchdowns in the game for Isaiah Ramo. Yep. I told you, he gets through the second, second level, he's gone. How deflated is this for Jason Zabalik at this stage? He had the big lead. He was controlling the game. A couple mistakes left the door open. And they run right through with Ramon. Well, the homecoming crowd. Tyus Freeman leading the charge has him on their feet. His special teams has to block this and give him good field position now. I wonder if they'll just squib kick it here. And let's not overlook what Chatsworth has done defensively in the second half. Remember, El Camino had all 21 in the first half. They've been held in check. Colter. And again, nowhere to go. Brandon French with the stop. Flag is down behind the play. When it rains, it pours. Number nine. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Well, in that case, uh, El Camino's in a driving storm, a driving rainstorm. When it rains, it pours, coach. Well, you have an offense that has been bottled up in the second half, and they have a very long field in front of them. They have time. But let's see if they can execute here at Rick Prezon Stadium. In Lake Balboa. This Chatsworth defense again has really come on. Led by number 21, Odin. Hawkins. 
Again, the defense too good. Offensive line just not giving him any time or any protection. Second down and long. See that clock? 635 remains. El Camino needs a play. They, they need out of, to get out of the shadow of their own goal line. Well, Hawkins has to release the ball quicker. He can't hold it. He's got to get those quick hitch passes and let the receivers run. But now they're pressing. Uh, Chatsworth's secondary is pressing now. And they're putting two on Shirley. Yep. They won't let Jake get off the line of scrimmage freely. So they go the other way. Colter, and he only has a couple to the six. There's just not a whole lot there. To the credit of the Chancellors, they're running to the football. They're dominating the game. Well, they're, they came to play. Their character now is being displayed. They're showing what they want to do. They don't want to lose, and they've demonstrated that. They didn't quit. They were down, and, and they just didn't give up. I mean, that's a test of character. Never quit. Third down and ten. Time's dwindling away. If Chatsworth gets the ball back, they can put El Camino away. So this is a huge third down and ten. El Camino just not finding any openings in that Chatsworth D. They're going to come after him now. Hawkins in trouble. Gets away. What a run by Hawkins. He's got a first down. That's effort. That's guts, and it's a huge play for ECR to keep him alive. 12th man. The legs of the quarterback make the difference. Well, there's life for El Camino Real. They got a reprieve. They got to, now. They got to throw the quick hitch. They just can't hold the ball. Hawkins has to learn here now to be able to get rid of the ball right away. Let the receivers run. Coulter, and he's surrounded. And sadly, you'll notice how long Hawkins held the ball there before he threw it. He saw Coulter open, and he just still held the ball. He's got to release it right away. If you run that, you'll see that. You know, usually you get a, a feel is, for where they can go. I just don't see any openings for them to, you know, they can't protect long enough, so they have to throw quick short stuff. And he's, he's holding on to the ball too long. That's, again, maturity. He's young. He's, he's a sophomore. This is where the education is happening. He's got to learn how to do that. Well, he needs help from that offensive line, too. Oh, that goes without saying. That's better protection, and he's holding on to it, and he's going to run. He feels more comfortable running. There's no question about that, and he's chased out of bounds. Don't know that he's 100% either. He kind of hobbled to the sideline. Leif Cassone again is the one who ran him out of bounds. and That's a tired quarterback at ECR. He's taking a lot of hits, and that's, uh, you know, those little hits add up, and they make the big hits. Fans still having a great time on homecoming. But their football team is in dire straits. Third and five. Hawkins ran out of one third down situation to give him a first. Let's see what develops here. You got to snap the ball here. Yep, they're in trouble giving away five yards if they don't hurry. Snap it. Let's go. We did get it away in time. Jong has a first down. See the hitch? That's exactly what they have to do every play. Not right down the field. Catch, throw, catch, throw. Fresh set of downs for El Camino Royale. 
Down by five. They have time. That's not an issue. The question, can they move the football all the way down the field? Hawkins, the deep ball for John. He's got it. John is on his way. Touchdown, ECR. John with his second long touchdown of the game. Behind the play, it appears that Hawkins was shaken up. I think he was hit after the play. What a play by John. He won a 50-50 ball. And we talked about that. Short hitch and go. Wide open in the secondary. They came up so tight that now that deep pass is open. And let's give credit to quarterback Kevin Hawkins. He's still down, but he hung in the pocket under duress and delivered a pass that was good enough. It had to be. Well, we're going to have the delay for the injury. El Camino. One would think would go for two here, up a point. That's what you need to do. Still can't feel comfortable because you know Ramo's going to get the ball back. Well, but, I, but you knew they needed one big play, and they get it. Look at that sideline. You let the, the spot play and speak for itself. Nothing you can have. Still attending to the El Camino player down. Let's take another look at that touchdown from a different angle. Yeah, we can't see how he got hit. I'm sure it was after the play, but they didn't call it. I mean, you can't kick it here with a player down on the field, so they're going to just hold off for the time being. Still can't see it. What a play by John. Yeah. Second touchdown. It is not Hawkins, which is somewhat of a break, although you feel bad for the young man coming off the field for Conde. Aria for Conde is the one it's shaken up, 51. And he's helped off. Are you surprised they're going to kick the PAT and not go for two? Uh, it may be a fake here, Coach. Well, a lot of times you don't want to jeopardize it because if you get picked off and go back the other way, it's two points, and you theoretically could lose the game that way as well. But uh, most of the time, you think in terms of two to try to get yourself a field goal lead. Anyway, they're going for one, apparently. Kick is good. Twenty nine, twenty seven. That point is meaningless. Question: Can they stop Ramo? Well, they haven't been able to at all in the second half. Well, we were talking about testing character. You see the character of Elko. They didn't quit. They didn't give up. Now let's see if they can stand and, and make the stop that they need. Three and out. Actually, it'd be four and out. There, you know, Elko is not or Chatsworth won't go. They're going to go for the fourth down, no matter where they are. Well, standing back deep, Angelo Romo, Benji Gomez. Gomez has a touchdown. They're happy right now on homecoming. What a battle this has been. It is. We, we knew that it was going to turn out within a certain point spread, but 
the way this has happened is just uh, you couldn't script it any better in Hollywood. Now that the script writers are back. Oh, we're not that far from Hollywood either. That's true. We could write the script for this. Thank our guys and on the crew tonight at LA 36. Good pictures. Cheerleaders are into it. Yeah, why not? The team's got the lead for the moment. Right now, you still feel confident if you're Chatsworth. I see it. He didn't put it up. It's a 29-27 game. If my math is right. Here is a pooch kick. Coming forward is Luke Lawrence. Maybe my math isn't right. I don't know. Maybe not. Either way, El Camino leads, and they have to hold Chatsworth. 21 and 7 is 28, isn't it? Twenty-one and seven and twenty-eight. Yep, that's why they went for one. It was. I was wrong. We can't see the scoreboard from where we are, so it's very difficult. So. Let's see if Elko can see where Rameau is. That was obviously the right play, but can you stop this guy? Rameau building on his total. And a late flag. Sacks hit him late. This is not this is not the script you want to see if you're El Camino. So I was wrong. I said the point was meaningless. It was everything. It was the lead. We thought the score was uh, one more for El Camino, and they have the advantage now, 28-27. But let's see what the flags are here. We have two fouls on the play. Holding offense. Dead ball, personal foul, hit out of bounds. Two penalties on the play. We're going to mark off both penalties. Uh, I'm not sure I'll find out for you. So we'll go one way and then go back the other. I'm not going back. How was that two penalties and going back? To the 42. Don't understand to that quite candidly. Here's Ramon. Bottom line is they got to stop this guy. They need a fumble here. Three minutes left. They're going to start tackling the football here. Well, they were able to. Slow him down in the first half, other than the one big play. What's been the major difference? How has Chatsworth been able to isolate him and get him open? He's, he's, he's making his own openings. He's seeing the, the, the crack, and he's hitting it. And, and uh, again, he's staying between the tackles. We talked about that. 28-27, El Camino Real trying to hold on for dear life. Rameau hit by Shirley. The Stars meet one another, and it'll bring up third down. Two and a half minutes to play. Man, there's been a lot of hard hitting in this one. Ramon with that shoulder still in there. And he has been effective. Third down. They've got to key him. About seven. they got to put Shirley on a spy on, on Ramon. Wherever Ramon goes, that's where Shirley's going. Ramo again. No secret to what they're doing. He fumbled it. Oh, covered by Chatsworth. Covered for a first down. Wow. The break that Elko needed. Inside the 30. It's first down at the 28. Minute 45 left. This is the ball game. Chatsworth running the ball down the field. 
led by 23 Isaiah Ramo can El Camino somehow stop him they got him this time they all know it's going to him you bet and again they've got to put seven eight guys up on that line of scrimmage down to a minute 25 left they got to put eight guys in the box right now to stop this him because he's between the tackles and they got to load it load the box as they say actually may have lost a yard there second down and closer to 11 than 10 of course these timeouts taken by Chatsworth also give the defense a reprieve how many timeouts left do you see it can't see the scoreboard let's see if we can stretch out can't see it from here Well, the West Valley League opener has lived up to its billing. Put eight guys in the box, Coach Duran. Second down and 11. With it, Gomez. Big game, Benji Gomez. First down, Chatsworth. Sumo out. They give him a little bit of a breather, and 23 is coming right back onto the field. Let's see, and finally chasing him down. It was Sacks. Edwards was running over there as well, but they're inside the red zone. Ball near the 15. Leon in trouble. Surely got him. What a play by Shirley and Zonstein. Number nine was the first to get in there. See the clock inside of a minute. They've got to make penetration here. Got to think it's going to Ramo here, 23. Ramo right up the middle. Fighting to the 11-yard line. Dropped at that point by Saxon. Another timeout with 39 seconds. We're going right down to the wire. It's your Hollywood script, Randy. It certainly is. You know what? A field goal could win the game, too. Yep. So there are some options here for Chatsworth. I don't know how they feel about their kicking game and Marcel Ramirez. He's certainly within range, though. Got to load the box. You got to put eight, nine guys up there. Well, it's third down. You make the stop here. You got to think Chatsworth would call timeout. You got to kick the field goal. You got to try it. Third and 15. How's that? Five yards. Thirty-nine seconds left. Big plays here. Put eight guys in there. Pitch it to Ramon. There he goes. Inside the five. It's first and goal with 31 seconds left. They just can't stop him. Nope. Final 30 seconds. The clock is running. Need a turnover. They nearly had one before. Ramo didn't get there. See the clock down to 14. Do you have confidence in your kicker, or do you try to run it again? I think they're going to run it. This should be their last timeout. Problem is, if you run it and don't make it, and you don't have any more timeouts, the game's over. So let's see what Marvin Street elects to do. 28-27. 
They've got to put nine guys in the box here now. Guess who's going to get it? Did they use him as a decoy? Larry Bird, Magic Johnson. Heck of an opener. We'll be back next week with Taft and El Camino Real. Well, no field goal unit. That's no shock. Balls at the two. 14 seconds left. This might just be the ball game. Pitch to Ramon. See if procedure. El Camino may have called a timeout. Did they? Might have been a penalty. Let's see if they got the timeout or there was a penalty. This is for the goal. Repeat first down. So there was a penalty on El Camino, I think. He said half the distance to the goal. Yep. El Camino must have jumped off size. Now it's down to the one-yard line. No timeouts. Well, number 23 is the guy, Isaiah Ramo. Here's the ball game. The sneak. He didn't get there. He was stopped. But Del Camino is offside again. They're whistling offside on ECR. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Encroachment defense. Oh my goodness. Half the distance. Repeat first down. Oh my goodness. Didn't get better than this, does it, Randy? Well, a lot of mistakes here. And you feel bad if it costs El Camino the game. You got to feel great if you're Chatsworth. Let's try it again. Here's the pitch to Ramo. Close. He didn't get in. He didn't get in. Oh, my God. El Camino has won the football game. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. They're celebrating on homecoming. The Royals somehow. Oh, my goodness. How By did, inches, he didn't get in. How did that happen? You see the emotion on a John who's just spent. Oh, you, my goodness. How did Isaiah Ramon not get in? I, <laughs> it was scripted for him to just walk in. Good grief. What a heartbreaking loss. Oh. What an incredible finish. Oh, I'm exhausted, Coach. Our math might have been real poor down the stretch, but the finish was great. You exhausted me tonight with this. That's the kind of game we expected. That's the kind of game we had. Oh, my God. Shocking. El Camino ends up winning the game. You could not write the Hollywood script on this one. This is unbelievable. Tremendous game. Give credit to both teams. They didn't quit. Neither team quit. How about Chatsworth in the second half? Really battling and not only making a game of it, it looked like they had the game. Well, your player of the game, regardless of the score, was remote. There's no question. No, I, I don't know how many yards. We don't have the numbers. He's got to have 250, 300 yards. Easy. I don't, he had three long runs. Well, yeah, so. but I mean, again, he single-handedly demoed El Camino's defense. And, and they had a, a pretty good game plan for him. Well, we talked about that earlier, yeah. didn't we? We said they're ground and pounded. Guess what they did? Exactly that. There's no way they should have lost this game. You were right. They should have kicked the field goal with that 14 seconds left. Yeah, that's what I thought. You see the touchdown here. But uh, it was really about number 23, Isaiah Ramo. No question. Just outrunning everybody. I mean, you're talking about a guy that we didn't even know would play at the beginning of the night. We knew he would play. You thought he would play. They, they kept on saying he was a game-time decision. He fumbled forward and... Recovering and again, 23 Ramo Johnny on the spot. I'll tell you, he's the player of the month for me. One thing this does do, it gives El Camino some real impetus to go forward next week against Taft. 
But this is your play right here. Yep. This play is of the, the game. Yep. Touchdown to Jong. Look at this catch against two. Yep. Double coverage. And look at that sideline go nuts. And here's the real play of the game. This is the last one, and he did not get in. This is unbelievable. unbelievable. A great defense. Sachs was one of the guys that was in there. So was Cogwa, 31. I think it was Cogwa underneath. Sacks up high, and then the celebration. You going to come back and join me next week for the Taft game? I don't know. I got to get over this one first and catch my breath. Well, for El Camino, they go to 1 0 in the league. They go to 2 and 4 overall, and if you're Chatsworth, you're kicking yourself, you're 3 and 3 and 0 oh and 1, and just a dynamite, crazy, wild game. Fantastic finish for ECR. And if you were the coach, you would have kicked the field goal, wouldn't you? Probably. Yeah. I mean, again. It, again, it, you know, in the high school game, the kicking is somewhat suspect. But, but he made every extra point. But he was making his PATs, yeah. and that was, in, in essence, it was another PAT. So you had to think that. But on the flip side, you can't argue with the decision because, you know, you got a guy like Rameau who's been running wild all night, and you got to think he's going to pick it up. Well, what happened in the Super Bowl with a guy named uh, – what, what, I, I don't okay, know. I'll, I'll, I you mean when you. Russell Wilson threw it instead of running the football? Well, I mean, again, they had a they had an all-world running back, and they threw a pass, and it was intercepted. That's true. But I didn't say, I think you either kick it or run it. But they ran it. I don't think it's a bad decision per se, but it just came up short. Thank I, you, Paul, for a nice job tonight. It was a lot of fun. We'll <laughs> see you next week. You, Thank you, Randy. It's always a pleasure, and it's an enjoyment. I just, uh, I just have such a good time. 28-27. Keep sitting. You're going to be back next week. 28-27 for the Royals in a an extreme nail-biter. For our LA36 crew, for Paul, I'm Randy. We'll see you next week. Good night, everybody.